Good morning, Ms. Giannetti. I'm told there's an objection to something you intend to use during cross. Yes. Do you, you want to come over? Sure. Come on over. I wish we could hear the sidebars. Sidebars are my favorite. <laughs> Maybe um, maybe it'd be like the Debbie Heard trial where they release the sidebar transcripts and we get to see all the, the juicy stuff they talk about on the side. Okay, so his mom had, but no, his kids, I think, will be on the defense witness list. Okay. I'm not supposed to have caffeine, so I do mostly, oh, yes, herbal tea flavored waters. Yes, I love herbal tea. I have uh, my collection of herbal teas is growing. Prosecution hit that they know where Chloe is. I just wonder if they're going to get to that because they kind of need to. <laughs> <Don't> they? <laughs> we have a lot of questions. Anyway, so I was going back to the uh, the bar glass. So we saw the surveillance footage from the bar where John O'Keefe grabs a um, like a cocktail glass and then it seems to leave the bar with it. Right. Um, and then we've heard from two witnesses that Karen Reed might have smuggled a cocktail glass from the previous bar into the waterfall bar. So we want to know, okay, well, you know, how come the bartenders when they testified? Could have they just been like, hey, like, does this cocktail glass look familiar to you? You know, or hey, by the way, um, when they were drinking at your restaurant, like, does this receipt look familiar to you? How many orders of drinks did they get? You know, and then it will sh it'll show like how many drinks everyone got and then who paid for what, blah, 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 blah. Um, all I know is that someone bought a round of fireball shots. Was it him? Was it the guy who's uh, about to do a cross examination? Someone brought a round of fireball shots. <laughs> But I'm like, do we get to see receipts or do we get to hear more information about the glass? I don't know. They, they, it was brought up, but then that's about it. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Mr. Jackson. Thank you. Oh, it's Mr. Jackson. Mr. Albert, this is not, uh, this process is not the first time you've testified in the court of law, is it? No. In fact, you were a police officer for either just under or just over 30 years. Is that right? Yes. During that time, how many times would you say that you testified in a court of law in any capacity? Many, 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 many. I would say a uh, hundred perhaps. So you consider yourself to be an experienced witness. In what aspect? In, in as far as police, as far as being a witness as a police officer? You've experienced testifying in a courtroom. Yes. Okay, so you understand the oath. Yes. You understand the gravity of perjury. Yes. When was the last time you spoke to Mr. Lally before Friday when you began testifying? Before Friday, the last time I spoke to Mr. Lally was, I believe, on a conference call around the time of my grand jury testimony. Which would have been 2022? Yes. Uh, April ago. of 2022. Yes. So you've not spoken with Mr. Lally uh, since that time? I don't remember speaking with Mr. Lally since that time, no. What about anybody else from the district attorney's office? No. Have you gone over the facts uh, or what you believe to be the facts of your testimony with anybody before you testified on Friday, not including any lawyer that you may have? No. Bald guy uh, from did you Ghost discuss Hunters? any questions that you may be asked on direct examination or questions that you may be posed on cross-examination with any member of the district, uh, district attorney's office? No. Were you told about any exhibits or documents that you might be shown? Just in the, in the prep, I believe I was shown a, um, a video of the, of the waterfall bar. And that was back in April of 2022? No, that was for the prep for this, for this trial. With whom did you prep for this trial? I, I'm Mr. Lally. The bar. I'm confused. I thought you said you had not spoken with Mr. Lally since April of 2022. Except for the prep for this trial. I had not. Okay. That was my question, Mr. Albert. Okay. I misunderstood your question. I apologize. Did you prep for this trial with Mr. Lally? Yes. When? Uh, approximately a few weeks ago. Okay. Mr. Albert, about 45 seconds ago, I asked you, have you spoken with Mr. Lally before your testimony in this process? is proceeding. And your answer was, no, I have not. Did you not understand my question? I did not. What was confusing about it? I was expecting you to ask if I had prepped with Mr. Lally. I didn't hear prep with Mr. Lally, so I didn't know what you were referring to. So when I, I said spoke with Mr. Lally. I, I thought he meant like prep like uh, during the over, uh, over the weekend. <laughs> Maybe it's my 6 a.m. brain. <laughs> Lally, 
since I didn't say prep with Mr. Lally, your answer was no, I didn't speak with him. I just prepped with him. Yes. What's the difference between speaking and prepping? No, there is no difference. I just misunderstood your question, that's all. Tell me about that prep with Mr. Lally. Sure. I prepped with Mr. Lally about the this trial with uh, Mr. Lally and my attorney. Where did that preparation take place? Uh, the preparation took place, um, I believe, I'm trying to remember exactly where it was. I actually don't recall where, where it was. Could it have been at the DA's office? Yes, but it wasn't, it wasn't at the um, DA's office, no. I believe it was somewhere else, but I can't remember if it was here at the DA's office. Okay. I'm not sure. I also asked you a couple minutes ago. Did you Next question. Mr. Lally do a good job at prepping? Review any documents <laughs> or any evidence in preparation for your testimony? And to that question, you also answered no. Well, I said I reviewed the video. Well, now you're saying you reviewed a video, but when I yes. asked you, did you, prepare, did you see any evidence or documents, anything, in preparation for your testimony? You said no, correct? No, I believe I said I reviewed saw the video. a video. Did you, understand, did you misunderstand my question when I asked it the first time as well? No. Okay, I'm going to try to be clearer with my questions. Okay. Hi, Richie. Let me try it again. What Let's start over. Have you reviewed in anticipation of your testimony in this trial? So I reviewed a video of the waterfall. Anything else? Um, I reviewed my transcript from the grand jury. So you have reviewed your prior testimony? My transcript of the grand jury, yes. Which is prior testimony, correct? Yes. When did you do that? I did that during, uh, during the prep. What part of the waterfall video did Mr. Lally show you? It was a small snippet of the video and I, just one of the 20 seconds of, of video during that night. Which part? There's a lot of video there. Which part, if you can tell us, which part did you review with Mr. Lally? It just showed the waterfall. It showed patrons. It showed myself and the other people I was with. What were you doing in that 20 second snippet of that video? I believe in one, in one portion of it, I was uh, fooling around with Brian Higgins. Oh, the play fighting? Around. Yes. What does that mean? It means we were just fooling around. That's it. Fooling around like uh, playing arm wrestling? No, I don't think we were arm wrestling. I think we were just pushing each other, fooling around. Oh, so play fight. I don't think I would call it play fighting. No, I was just. You remember seeing part of the video where you took a fighting stance, sort of like this? I actually don't remember that part. No. No. Remember? It, it, it was it was play fighting. I think it's okay for him to say he was play fighting. We could all see it was play fighting. The jury could see it too. Hi, Tristan. Part of the video where Brian Higgins took a fighting stance, sort of like this. Maybe yes. Two of you approached one another. I don't think I saw that whole video. No. Oh, Mr. Lolly, did you do a good job prepping? Practicing fighting techniques? I don't, I wouldn't call it that, no. no. You can have that. What, I'm sorry, what was your answer to that, Mr. Albert? No. So what you reviewed with Mr. Lally was the portion of the video where you and Mr. Higgins were somehow fooling around. And well, how would you describe it? If it's not fighting techniques, how would you describe it? Just joking, being silly, just fooling around. Okay. Doing what physically? Doing... Well, if you rephrase physically, I mean, you can joke with words, right? Were you doing, just joking with words like a stand up comedian, or were you doing something physically? No, I think we were pushing each other, fooling around, joking. Okay, did you ever show him how to throw a punch? Did I what? Did you throw him? How, did you show him how you would throw a punch? Uh, I don't remember that. No, oh, Mr. Lolly, squat down, show him how you want to get low when you're either. Aggressive or defending an aggression? I don't remember that exact pose, no. Did he walk over to you and grab you and act like he was going to drive a knee into your stomach? I'm not sure. At some point, did you flip him around and grab him in a, in a wrestling hold? I may have. I just don't remember it exactly. Do these things sound familiar when you reviewed uh, as to your review of the video that you saw with Mr. Lally? No, I didn't see all those on the video of Mr. Lally. So it's either Mr. Lally didn't show the entirety of it or 
sometimes when you're a witness testifying, you're like super, super defensive and you don't want to admit to something small because you're afraid something small is going to lead to the next thing and to the next thing. And then at some point you're like slowly admitting to something that you didn't do. But I think the initial start, yes, I was play funny at the bar. I think that's okay. Cause then you could just deny whatever else Mr. Um, Jackson's going to ask. Ah! Did you discuss with Mr. Lally the questions that you might be asked by him on direct examination? Did he go through, here are the topics of conversation that we're going to have? No, not like that. Did he go over with you what he believed the topics of conversation might be on cross-examination by either myself or Mr. Unetti? I believe so, yes. What did he tell you, you might be asked? I don't remember exactly what he, what he told me. He said we could be asked about um, the night at the waterfall. We could be asked about back at the house, uh, things like that. Anything else? Not that I can remember. Why doesn't the judge stop the badgering the witness? Um, well, Mr. Lolly, I didn't hear an objection. <laughs> I think the judge could only do something if the uh, if Mr. Lolly objected, right? <laughs> is there anything, given your conversation with Mr. Lolly, is there anything that you want to change about the testimony that you previously gave under oath in April of 2022? No. The fact that you now reviewed that testimony? No. You stick by that testimony? Yes. Okay. Good morning, Mav. Have you watched any of these proceedings on any platform before your testimony? No. You've never tuned in to anything that's live streaming, any of the media coverage? No. You're aware that your wife testified before you? Yes. Did you discuss, I don't want to know what the words were. Did you discuss her testimony with her before you testified? No. So she came home after testifying in this trial, and you two never brought it up? No. I just asked her how she was doing, and that was it. Mr. Albert, are you close friends with Brian Higgins? I wouldn't describe it as close friends, no. He's a fellow law enforcement officer, correct? Yes. Works for the ATF? He does. The Department of, or the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives, correct? Yes. How long have you known Mr. Higgins? I think I first met Mr. Higgins about 15 years ago. How did you meet him? It was a professional something at work. Um, we may have worked together. I think at the time he was a Cambridge arson squad member, and I think he came into the city of Boston to do something for work. So you've known him for 15 years and you were with him on January 28th, 2022, correct? Yes. And he's the person that you were, quote, joking and fooling around with, right? Yes. You had a long road trip with Mr. Higgins on January 28th, 2022, didn't you? Is there, what's the question? You had a long road trip with Mr. Higgins on January 28th, 2022, correct? We drove from New York to Boston, yes. How many hours drive is that? It's a pretty good drive, you'd say? Yes. Consider that a road trip? Yes. How long? I don't know if it was probably somewhere around four hours, maybe. Oh, four hours. Oh. Once you got back from New York to back up to Boston, the yes. Boston area, uh, the two of you stopped at a location, correct? Yes. What was the location? The hillside. And what did you two do at the hillside? Um, we went into the hillside, had, had a drink, Talked oh, and I, I think Brian may have ordered food. So once you got back from that relatively long road trip, that four-hour long trip, four-hour long road trip, I apologize, uh, you stopped at a bar and started drinking, correct? Yes. Do you have anything to eat at the hillside? I did not. But Brian did. Brian I, Higgins did. I left prior to Brian Higgins eating. <clears throat> um, during the course of that road trip, or at the hillside, did the two of you discuss Karen Reed, my client? No. Did her name ever come up? No. Without telling me anything that he may have actually said, did he mention Karen Reed or the topic of Karen Reed? No, never. Because mm, we've heard about Hillside quite a few times, and I'm like, hmm, what's going on with Hillside? He mentioned the fact that he had been texting and flirting with Karen Reed two weeks prior. No. So that subject, according to you, was never addressed or broached by Mr. Higgins or you? No. During that entire day? No. After you arrived at the waterfall, John O'Keefe arrived subsequent there too, right? Yes. How long after? Uh, approximately 45 minutes, maybe. And Karen Reed was with him, is that right? Yes. Brian Higgins was standing right next to you when she came in, along with John O'Keefe, correct? I'm not sure where people were standing when they arrived. Well, you remember being, you, you saw video, correct? Not of, I don't believe there's any, I saw a video of them walking into Waterfall now. Yeah, okay, so I did hear about some texting or something going on with Karen Reed, and I was like, with who? So maybe Brian Higgins? Fair enough, but you saw at least a clip, according to you, you saw a clip of that video of you at the waterfall, correct? Yes. Can we see you the text? situated at a high top table, right? Yes. The back is sort of to the camera, is that right? I'm not sure of the, of the camera angles. The video that I saw, 
I was at the high top table, um, but I'm not sure of all the camera angles of the of the waterfall. Brian Higgins is the guy with the sweatshirt with the, maybe a Harley Davidson emblem on the back or something. I'm not sure what he wore that that night. I'm sure he had a sweatshirt on, but I don't know what the emblem was. I did. He was standing right next to you in the video clip that you saw. Yes. Okay. In, in other words, they, that was the video where he was standing right next to you, and you two turned to each other and start this play fighting thing. Yes. Hi, Caitlin. Good morning. So it's the, if it's that time or sometime around there at the high top, you were in proximity of Brian Higgins when... Karen Reed and John O'Keefe came into the bar, correct? I just don't recall the timing of when they came into the bar. All right, Mr. Albert, did Mr. Higgins say anything to you at that time about John O'Keefe arriving with Karen Reed at his side? No. Did Mr. Higgins say anything to you about being upset that Karen Reed had shown up with John O'Keefe? No. Describe your relationship with John O'Keefe, if you would. So I didn't know John that well. I had only met him a few times, um, but every time I met him, it was cordial, um, pleasant, and um, I would consider him to be a, a co-worker, even though I, I never really worked with him directly. Um, he seemed like a nice guy. I knew his whole story about the fact that he had taken his niece and nephew after a tragedy in the family, and the I had an unbelievable did. amount of respect for him doing that. Um, but I can't say that we were good friends because I didn't really know him all that well. You were far better friends with Brian Higgins than you were with John O'Keefe. That's fair to say. Yes. On Friday, you were asked whether or not you knew my client, Karen Reed, correct? This meeting a couple days ago during your direct examination. I believe so, yes. You were also asked the same series of questions at another grand jury not involving the Commonwealth. Remember that in June of 2023? Yes. I want to be clear about these, this other hearing. Um, that was a non-Commonwealth hearing in front of a grand jury, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, Mr. Lally and, and his uh, colleagues were not there. Is that right? Yes. I was not there. Mr. Uh, Yanetti was not there. Yes. Or Ms. Uh, Ms. Little. Right. Okay. Um, at that June 2023, and I'm going to talk about a couple of dates, so I don't want to be confusing. At that June 2023 non-Commonwealth hearing, Yes, please, don't jump around like Mr. Lolly with timelines. <laughs> you were asked some questions about whether or not you knew Karen Reed before January 28th, 2022. I believe so. That's question. I believe so, yes. And you testified, before you testified, you were sworn an oath. Yes. Same oath that you swore that, uh, in this trial, correct? Yes. Oh, swore different to tell answers? the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. And you knew that you were testifying under penalty of perjury in that hearing as well, correct? Yes. And you testified at that non-Commonwealth grand jury that you, quote, believe Karen was with John the night he came into Hillside, a female that looked similar to Karen from the waterfall came in with him in the, uh, on that night. And I assume that was her, but I can't say for sure, end quote. That was your testimony before that grand, uh, that, uh, grand jury. Yes. But you were also asked a similar question in April of 2022 by Mr. Lally at his grand jury. Do you remember that? No. Let's start at the beginning. Before you testified in the April 2022 <laughs> grand jury, more than a year earlier, and just three months after this incident, you were sworn an oath, correct? Yes. The same oath that you took in June of 2023, right? Yes. And the same oath you took on Friday. Yes. Isn't it true that you were asked the question whether or not you knew Karen Reed on January 28th, 2022, and you testified, quote, I've never met or seen her before, end quote. No, I don't recall that. Didn't you indicate that you just testified, I'm sorry, that you reviewed your grand jury testimony in anticipation to this trial? Yes. You would have read the whole thing? Yes. And you don't recall making that statement? No. Mm-hmm, the accents, yes. Yes, and I'll see Consulate Taibau when you leave that with the witness. Just 
please take a look at that. Sure. Hello. Good morning. How are you doing today? Mm, is there a sound? Yes. Were some people having sound issues? Hey, lemon baked. Oh, man. Imagine starting your day off first thing in the morning with a cross-examination. Oh, as a witness. That's a tough one, man. I hope he had good sleep and I hope he uh, had some barfos. Oh, maybe they were having some stream issues. Him taking his glass out of the pocket was perfect. Oh, who did that? I missed it. I missed it, Sarah. <laughs> How's everyone's morning so far? Hello, hello. Yes. Shabba, have you had an opportunity to review that? I have. Thank you. Does that refresh your recollection as to what you said before the grand jury in April of 2022? Y yes, but you, you didn't read the whole you didn't read the whole quote though. Right. The whole quote is the following question. So the female you had never met before, is that fair to say? Answer. No, I've never met her or seen her before, period. Maybe once, but I don't think I've ever had a conversation with her. That was the entire quote, correct? That's the entire quote, yes. That's not what you read earlier, but yes. Well, what I read earlier was I've never seen, I'm sorry, I've never met or seen her before. Those words came out of your mouth, correct? That's not my whole sentence, no. You said I've never met or seen her before, and then you said maybe once, but I've never had a conversation with her, I don't think. Right, correct? that's, yes, that's my sentence. Okay, so which is it, Mr. Albert? What were you saying? <gasps> Were you saying you met her and had a conversation with her? Or were you saying, I've never met or seen her before? Which one of those two things was true? I was saying that I've met her maybe once. Actually, what you said was, I've never met her or seen her before. Your words, not my words, sir. Isn't that right? No, because in the next sentence, I say, I met her maybe once. So you literally changed your testimony within your own testimony. Objection. No, can you answer that, Mr. Albert? I believe I qualified my first sentence with his second sentence. So what changed between the first sentence where you indicated unequivocally, I've never met or seen her before, and the second sentence when you said, maybe once? I'm not sure what I was thinking at the time that I said that. Isn't it true, Mr. Albert, not only had you met Ms. Reed, but you had spent several hours with Karen Reed and John O'Keefe six days before this incident. Six days. Is that true? What were they doing? No. Is this is a barbecue? In fact, on January 22nd, 2022, six days before January 28th, you socialized with Karen Reed at the Hillside Bar for several hours, didn't you? Oh, <laughs> you forgot about I her? I was at the Hillside Bar the week prior, yes. It was a Saturday night, correct? Yes. You were at the bar? Yes. There were several other folks at the bar, correct? Several people, yes. That included Chris Albert, your brother? Yes. A guy named Tim Daly? Yes. D-A-I-L-Y, is that right? I'm not sure how to spell his last name. Julie Albert was there? Yes. Jen McCabe was there? Yes. Matt McCabe was there? Yes. John O'Keefe was there? Yes, he was. And Karen Reed was there, correct? Yes, she was. In fact, Your Honor, Madam Judge, yes. I'd like you to take a look at a photograph. Just look at that to yourself for a second. Tell me if you familiar, familiarize yourself with it and then look up when you're ready. Yes. May I approach? Yes. Actually, I don't need to. Mr. Albert, you can stay there. Can we see the picture? Do you recognize the photograph that's uh, before you? Yes. How do you recognize it? Um, well, I recognize the people within the photograph and the background of the photograph looks like the hillside. 
Yes. That appeared to be a photograph that was taken on Jan uh, January 22nd, 2022. Yes. We were at the Hillside Bar. Yes. May I uh, publish this now? Okay. Is it already in evidence? Or you not, Your Honor, I'm, I'm sorry. I... So you put it in evidence first and then you publish May it. I have that marked as next in order? Yes. And then... Thank you. Is it like a screen grab of a surveillance footage or is it like a photo that someone took? <laughs> I'm not quite sure what happened to them. Maybe another brother? Because I know that's John's brother sitting right there. Maybe his brother. Publish the publish on. Yes. Thank took you. the kids in. Maybe John's parents. You see that photograph? Uh, it's the same photograph that you're looking at in front of you? Yes. Describe who the people are going from left to right, sir. Chris Albert, myself, John O'Keefe, and Tim Daly. And this was on January 22nd, 2022, at about 11 p.m., correct? Yes. May I approach on it? Yes. Mr. Albert. Who took the photo? Oh, was it Karen? I don't know. <laughs> Karen Reed took the photo, didn't she? I have no idea who took that photo. Karen Reed took the photo. You're literally staring right at her, correct? I, I don't know who took the photo. Well, who else do you think you could have been? Well, there are a lot of people there. You mentioned my sister, two sister-in-laws, a brother-in-law. I'm not sure. Will you turn the lights back on, please, and take the photo down? You hate how small the courtroom is? Did you ever see this photo uh, from Jim McCabe? No. Did you ever see it from Julie Albert? No. Chris Albert didn't take it. He's in it. Right. Tim didn't take it. He's in it. Right. You obviously didn't take it. Right. And who's the guy on the far right? Tim. That was Tim. Who's the guy next to Tim? John. Right? So who do you think... Do you still need the photo up? I'm sorry. I thought you were done with it. Do you, do you remember? Yeah. I, I, it was John. Yeah. Okay. The yes. Cap on, correct? Yes. I don't need it, John. Okay. Um, so given the fact that you were never shown that photo... You've never seen that photo before today, right? I saw a photo um, that was sent to me in Discovery or to my attorney that showed only... I believe me and John in the picture. Okay. I think it's the same photo, only that's blown up to show everybody. Got it. It was cropped. So, given what you now know about that night, who was there, the fact that John is posing for a photo right next to you, who do you think took the photo, sir? I have no idea who took the photo. Could it have been Karen Reed? Objection. Sustained. Let's move along from in that, fact, please. Um, You were interacting with Karen Reed and John O'Keefe throughout that evening, correct? I remember having conversations with John that evening. I don't necessarily remember speaking to Karen that evening. Irrespective of whether or not you spoke to her, you obviously saw her there. Yes. You were there with, with her for a couple of hours. Well, I wasn't there with her for a few hours. I was there with other people. Okay. So without splitting work, splitting hairs, she was there, correct? Yes. John was there. Yes. You were socializing with John. Yes. She was right next to him. Sometimes, perhaps not, maybe all the times I was talking to him, no. So you were socializing not exclusively with her. Right. You were certainly socializing with her six days before John O'Keefe ended up dead on your lawn, correct? We were there at the same time, yes. And yet, when you were asked three months later... Do you know Karen Reed, or how do you know Karen Reed? The actual question was, so the female you've never met before, is that fair to say? That was Mr. Lally's question, and your immediate response was, no, I've never met her or seen her before, correct? That's what that's, you said. That's not my whole response, no. That's what you said immediately upon that question, sir. That's the beginning of my response, yes. That was the first sentence out of your mouth. Yes. I feel like we can move away from this. You also testified at the subsequent grand jury in June of 2023. 
When asked, what was your impression of Miss Reed? You said, quote, I honestly didn't really have one. I didn't have any conversation with her. I just kind of saw her from across the table. I didn't really think of it either way. Correct? I don't know what that question is referring to. Is that for the waterfall or is that for Hillside? Hillside. Okay, yes. All right. Um, so in June of 23, like a little over a year later, your testimony significantly changed from no, I've never seen, met or seen her before to I really didn't have a conversation with her. I saw her across the table. I didn't really think of it either way. Correct? No, I think those are very similar testimonies. When you were asked in the... Uh it seems like Jen McCabe was friends with Karen Reed, but I think Karen Reed was kind of seen as like an outsider because everyone else was very close-knit with each other. So it's possible they could all hung out together and then Mary Karen Reed just like just chatted with Jen McCabe. Maybe she kind of just like stayed in her lane. Maybe she was quiet. Maybe she didn't really socialize much. Um, and then he just like didn't remember that she was there. They're proceeding. And this is about the waterfall. Question, did you talk to Karen Reed at the waterfall that night? You answered unequivocally, I did not. Is that right? Yes. And that's what you told the June grand jury, June of 23, correct? Are you referring to the state grand jury? No, I'm sorry. Okay. That's why I'm using dates. I'm trying to be careful. Right. April I'm, just not, I'm just not clear on what all the dates were. I'll see if I can clarify. Okay. April 2022, state grand jury. June of 2023, a different grand jury. Okay. okay. When you were asked at the June of 2023 grand jury, um, did you ever talk with Karen Reed at the waterfall that night? Your answer was, I did not. Correct? Yeah, yes. Okay. Um, with the court's permission, can I play a small clip from these? Was the June one, um, was that the, because it said non-Commonwealth hearing and like no one, none of the lawyers were there, including Mr. Lolly. Was that like the federal one? Okay. Just play this, and I would direct your attention, sir, to the upper right-hand corner. There's Karen, I think. Wow. Does the defense and the state have different technology or something like that? I like the zoom in they did. Do you recognize the individuals in this clip? Yes. Is that him? You recognize that person? Yes, I believe that's me. You recognize that person? I do. I believe that's the defendant. Ms. Reed? Yes. What does it appear you <laughs> are doing as it relates to Ms. Reed in this clip? It appears that I'm talking at the table. I don't know if it's specifically to her, but... So, did you see the part of the clip uh, starting at... 11.53 and 15 seconds, going back about 30 seconds? Yes. Okay. Who did it appear you were talking directly to, and who did it appear was answering directly to you? I looked like I was speaking, but I, I can't say for sure that I was directly talking to the defendant. Even though it looked like you were looking right at her and leaning toward her, and I, she's answering you. I was definitely looking that way. I just, I don't remember the conversation. The reality is, let me take that down. The reality is, Mr. Albert, you had many conversations with her throughout the night, like you would with anybody else you were socializing with, correct? No. It's not like you ignored her through that evening. No, I just, no, I think that just the positioning of me on the other side of the table, I didn't have really much contact. There was only one person between you, and that was Mr. Higgins. No, I don't think that was the setup for the whole night. I didn't say the whole night. Right. I was talking about right then. Right, so... That's so, an example. Right, what's your question? Uh, rephrase your question, please. Did you or did you not have conversations with Karen Reed that night? I, didn't, I do not recall having conversations with Karen Reed that night at all, no. And that's what you told the grand jury under oath, notwithstanding this video evidence to the contrary. Yes, I don't think that that video shows that. I'm going to let that stand. Next question, please. You were interviewed by Michael Proctor on January 29th, the day after this incident, correct? Yes. Mr. Proctor. And that was Proctor. six days after you spent several hours, Karen Reed, at this event. Correct? Six days later. Yes. You would think X would be good at remembering you cases. You were asked by Michael Proctor whether or not you knew or what your relationship was with Karen Reed, correct? 
I don't recall if he you asked me that. Did you say to Michael Proctor, quote, that you, you, quote, did not know Karen Reed, end quote? I may have, yes. But when you made that statement, you did not know that Ms. Reed had a photograph of you at the Hillside Bar, correct? You didn't know that photo existed, did you? Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Sir, you were trying to distance yourself from Ms. Reed in your interview with Michael Proctor, weren't you? Objection. Were you? No, I was not. Mr. Albert, you were trying to distance yourself from knowing Ms. Reed in your grand jury testimony with, well, I'll use the date, in your April 2022 grand jury testimony, weren't you? No. You were further trying to distance yourself from Ms. Reed in your June 2023 grand jury testimony as well, correct? No. You thought that it was important to try to deny knowing John O'Keefe and Karen Reed during those interviews and or that testimony. Objection. Sustained. Mr. Albert, you knew that if you admitted having a relationship with John O'Keefe and Karen Reed, you'd have a lot to answer for when Karen Reed's boyfriend ended up dead on your lawn six days later, correct? Objection. Sustained. You can ask the question differently. You knew that there would be questions about your relationship with Karen Reed if it were known that you knew her before her boyfriend ended up dead on your lawn six days later, correct? There would be questions. Objection. You can ask it a different way. That's sustained. <clears throat> so you lied under oath when you said, I've never met or seen her before, correct? No, because that wasn't my whole statement. The sentence, I've never met or seen her before, is pretty unequivocal, isn't it? That was not the context of my whole sentence. But that's the words that came, those are the words that came out of your mouth, right? Initially, and then I remembered that I had met her once. Let me just ask it this way. Sure. Is that sentence true or false? Christy. That you had never met or seen her before. True or false? That portion of that sentence is false. Tell them to text you. Let's get this on the record. Did John O'Keefe come into your house at 34 Fairview at any time on January 29th, 2022? Absolutely not. I wish he had. And you're sh as sure about that as you are about the statement that you had never met or seen Karen Reed in your life. Objection. Correct? Sustained. You can ask it differently, Mr. Jackson. Mr. I want to get Jackson. back to the waterfall. Hi, Rhiannon. Yeah, I feel like we could I know I asked you this about the hillside. I may not have asked you about this, uh, this specific question about the, the waterfall. Did Brian Higgins say anything to you? Like, I could see the tactic that he's doing. It's like, okay, well, if you, you know, lied here, lied here, forgot here, forgot here, how can we rely on the rest of your testimony today? I think that's what he's trying to implant into the jury's mind. But I think, I think, I think we can move on. You about John O'Keefe and Karen Reed walking in together at the waterfall? No. Did he say anything or give you any, any, any indication that he was upset about Karen Reed showing up at, with John O'Keefe? No, he did not. Mm -hmm. It appeared from your observations that John and Karen were getting along at the waterfall. I didn't really notice, but I didn't notice anything was wrong. So maybe Brian Higgins was jealous? Yes. Happy? I don't know if they appeared happy. I, I didn't really notice. They were interacting with others? Yes. You didn't notice any tension? No. No argument? No. No yelling or fighting? No. Nope. They looked like a normal, happy couple? Yes. That's what everyone um, said. Did either of them appear to you to be completely drunk? I didn't have a ton of interaction with John or Karen that night, so I, I can't really say, but it didn't appear them that they were drunk, no. You had an opportunity to, to review the, the waterfall video. You did it with Mr. Lally, correct? The only small portion of it. Right, but even in that small portion, and based on your memory, you don't remember that anybody being stumbling drunk, getting falling down over stools and things of that nature? No. They appear to be acting appropriately. Yes. And interacting with others appropriately. Yes. People were drawing, buying drinks for others. Is that right? I'm, sh I'm sure. Fireball. I don't recall exactly, but I'm, I'm sure that was going on. Yes. It's not that unusual to say, hey, I'll, I'll get this round, correct? 
Yes. Um, you left the waterfall at 11.58, is that right? Yes, approximately. Who was invited to come over to your house upon leaving the waterfall? Whoever wanted to, really. You'd been drinking since about what time in the evening or in the afternoon? Um, Nine-ish. That's when you went to the hillside? Yes. That's when you had your first drink? Yes. And you continued drinking throughout the evening consistently? Yes. Did you believe you were okay to drive? Yes. Um, what kind of car did you have at the time? Uh, Ford Edge. Black? Yes. Uh, SUV, rode, right? Did you drive that car home from the waterfall? Yes. Uh, who rode with you? Uh, my wife and my daughter. What other cars were in the driveway when you got there? I don't recall. Brian Higgins' Jeep was in the driveway backing up as we pulled in. So kind of in your way? Yes. In, in other words, you weren't going to park him in. I didn't, want, he, I didn't want to block him in. Right, right. So he, you waited until he moved his Jeep out of the way. Yes. And then you pulled in. Yes. Where, where in the driveway did you pull in? I believe I pulled to the left side of the driveway. Uh, you would have been closest to the garage, or was there a car before, between you and the garage? I would have been closest to the left side walkway. I, I don't think there was a car in front of me, but I'm not 100%. Hello. Um, Mr. Albert, did you move that black Ford Edge at any point that night after you got home? No. Brian Higgins was the first person to actually physically get to the house. He got there before you, correct? Yes. Describe his Jeep. Um, he had a Jeep Wrangler. I believe it's white. I think it's white. Any appendage on it? Uh, a plow. A snow plow on the front? Yes. Oh, uh, what? Hydraulically go up and down. I didn't see it that closely. I'm assuming it can, but I don't, I don't know that for sure. You put a snow plow After on Mr. Higgins moved out of your way, out of the driveway, where did he put that Jeep? I don't know. I don't know where he parked. So you wouldn't have gotten to the house if you left Waterfall at 1158. You have to get out to your car, get in your car, start it up, drive home, wait for Brian Higgins to move his Jeep, park your car, then get into the house. That's a fair assessment of the, the mechanism of you getting home that night, correct? Yes. Uh, what car did the, um, the son drive again where the donuts were, were left in? Um, you wouldn't have gotten into the house until, what, 12, 15? Maybe 15 minutes for all that? Uh, I would put it more... Maybe 10 past 12. Okay. Uh, 12, 10 or so? Uh, that, would just be a, that would just be a guess. <laughs> so it could have been 12, 15. Yeah, and it could have been 12, 07. Who was inside the house when you walked in? Uh, my nephew, Colin, and my son, Brian, and then he had two friends, female friends. I believe it's uh, Sarah and Julie. What were they doing inside the house? Uh, they were just sitting at the kitchen table. And your nephew, Colin, uh, how old was he at the time? I believe 17 or 18. Describe him. In what way? Height, weight. So, two and a half years ago. Um, so, he was probably 5'11, maybe six feet, and probably. Is he one who plays football? And, you know, I'm guessing 175 pounds. Big boy. He's not a, not a small kid. Right. I'm bigger than me, significantly. Yes. Athletic guy? Yes. Played football? Yes. Oh, he does look small. Yes. You testified that you went to the bathroom after you arrived home, correct? Yes, after saying hi to everybody, I went to the bathroom. Was that upstairs or downstairs? I'm not sure I have a bathroom downstairs. and up, Not downstairs, but on that floor and then upstairs. So I'm not sure which one I went to. When you came I think back it was home, upstairs. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. I think that. it may have been upstairs, but I'm not sure. When you came back downstairs uh, from the bathroom or came out of the bathroom, wherever it was, uh, you no longer saw Colin. Yes, prior to going to the bathroom, Colin had said that he was getting picked up. But you never saw him leave? No. You didn't see him leave the house, and you didn't see him get picked up by anybody? I did not. You didn't see a car outside waiting for him, correct? I didn't, no. Did Colin walk home, or did he have his own car? You did give an initial oh, statement it, right? on the morning of the 29th. Because the only car that was on the driveway was Brian Higgins, right? To Michael Lank. About 7 a.m., is that right? You know, Officer Lank was in the house at that time and speaking to all of us, really. And you've admitted that you have known Michael Lank for many years. Is that right? Yes. Did you see that as a problem? 
In what way? <laughs> conflict of interest. Objection, Your Honor. I'll let him have it. Did you see that as a conflict? No. You were asked who was present at the house that night, the night before, right? Yes. You stated the following people were at the house that night, quote, in, in response to Officer Lank's uh, question, at some point during the time in question. That's how he phrased the question. Who was at the house at some point during the time in question? You understood that, right? I don't recall his question, no. You knew that he was asking who was in the house, right? That's right, yes. So you mentioned Brian Albert Jr., Yes. Your son. You mentioned Caitlin Albert, your eldest. Yes. You mentioned Julie Nagel. Yes. You mentioned Brian Higgins. Yes. And then you added the detail that Caitlin Albert had left your house about 12.15 a.m., correct? No. You didn't say that? I did not. <clears throat> Let me have just a moment. Here. Yes. We caught up? Yeah, we are. So this is 7 a.m. interview with Sergeant Lank. Lank. Sergeant Lank. A.K.A. Sergeant Link. Sergeant Lang. I know, right? I'm like, please state the grounds for the objections. Hey, which one? Yes. For us non-lawyer folks. Colin was waiting for his ride. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, then we have to have testimony from that person, right? Who came and pick up Colin? So you don't have to sit and read the entire thing. There's a right at the top of this. Man, if only we had a ring camera. Next, if you would read that area, that next few sentences, let me know when you're finished. Um, well, he's saying the guy never made it inside his house. It was in front of the lawn-ish, but like all the way to the edge, all the way to the side. Hello, study. Oh, the glass is not even like touching his ear. It's like floating. <laughs> like floating on his head. May I yes. Thank you. Strabo, did you have an opportunity to review that portion of a report? I did. Did that refresh your recollection about a conversation that you had along with your wife with Officer Lank? Yes. Isn't it true that Officer Lank asked you, uh, asked you and your wife, who else was in the house that night, aside from the names already mentioned? And the names mentioned were Brian Albert Jr., Caitlin Albert, Julie Nagel, and Brian Higgins, quote, who is a friend of Brian Albert Sr., end quote. Is that right? That's what it, the report says, yes. And then the report goes on to say, they advised me that their daughter, Caitlin, left the house around 12.15 a.m. when she was picked up by her boyfriend, Kristen Morris. Right? That's what the report says, yes. Do you think Officer Lank got it wrong? Perhaps, yes. Did you say that uh, Caitlin left about 12.15? No. Did Nicole say in your presence that Caitlin left about 12.15? She did not. At any point, did uh, Officer Lank ask you what time Caitlin left? I don't recall him asking that. It was a very chaotic morning, and I, I don't remember him saying that. So. Oh, I think when they were doing the cross-examination of his wife, they were trying to bring up the, like, oh, initially in the police report, you never brought up that Colin was at the house. And she was like, oh, but I think this was different, though. Might have been a different scenario, but I remember they did a cross-examination of his wife, and uh, they were like, why didn't you say Colin was at the house? Why didn't you mention Colin? And then she was like, well, I only mentioned the people that I was hanging out with, which were, you know, the list of friends. Is this a separate report? So, in fact, if he wrote that sentence in the report, which you just read, he's just making that up. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Oh, let's get a different way. But if that's what Officer Lank recalls, he's just wrong, right? Yes. Anything else that he's wrong about on that? I didn't read the whole report. At no point, isn't it true that at no point during that interview did you admit or mention that Colin Albert had been at the house that night? I don't believe I did, no. At no point during that interview did your wife, Nicole, in your presence, admit or mention that Colin Albert was in the house that night? No. So did both of you conveniently forget that Colin was there? Objection. I'll ask it Did you forget that Colin had been there? No. Is there a reason that you left his name out? 
because he, he wasn't there. He left when we got there. He wasn't there for the duration of the of the time that we had that night. Except for the fact that you just specified you never saw him. Right? Well, he said he was getting picked up and then he was gone. So I assumed he left. People say a lot of things, but you didn't see him leave and you didn't see him in the, the, the regular floor of the house, according to you, correct? Right. He, the the house. right. he was no longer in my house, so he left. Well, you didn't search the house, did you? No. And you never saw him leave? I didn't physically see him leave, no. You also gave a statement to Michael Proctor later that morning. It was about noon. Maybe it was in the afternoon. Noon, 1230, something like that. Are you asking? On the 29th. You later, after you spoke with Officer Lank, you later... Interviewed by oh, that's like the court stenographer. I think there's another way to do it where you're not like typing it, so you can just speak into it, and then maybe it'll transcribe that. I, my trooper Michael Proctor over Jim McCabe's house. Do you remember that? Yes. Colin's name was never mentioned then either. No, because Colin wasn't at the house for the duration of the night. So when they said who was in the house, talked about Brian Albert, Caitlin Albert. Yes. Folks in the house. Yes. No. Nagel. Yes. And there were other people in the house prior to us arriving. I didn't mention them either. Who was that? Uh, there were some females, um, friends that were over prior to our arrival. And I, just, but, but you never even saw them? No. So you have no idea who was there and who wasn't there before you got there? No, I know that there were people at the house prior to me getting there. Mr. Albert, the question that would have been posed to you by several officers was, who did you see in your home when you got there, correct? Objection. No, I'll allow it. I don't believe that's how it was asked, no. But Colin's name was never mentioned. It's left out. <clears throat> um, I testified multiple times that Colin was there when we, we arrived. Oh, you, you did it after the fact, right? Yes, when yeah, I was there. You knew that the defense knew that Colin was there. Objection. Yeah, I want to see the timeline on this of when Colin was mentioned uh, in their interviews. So not when Proctor was interviewing them and not when Sergeant Lank was interviewing them. In your initial reports to the police, his name was never mentioned, was it? I did not mention it, no. And Nicole did not mention it in your presence, did she? In my presence, no. Let's talk about Caitlin Albert, your eldest. You told Officer Lank that your daughter, well, according to Officer Lank, let me rephrase the question based on our, our colloquy back and forth. According to Officer Lank, you're aware that he wrote, he was told she was gone by 1215, correct? Uh, th that's what he wrote in the report, yes. If Caitlin was gone by 1215, she would not have been there when John and Karen arrived to the house, correct? Because they didn't arrive for 15 minutes later. But she was at the house, so I, that would be a hypothetical. Okay. So... Fine. Hypotheticals. Let's, let me ask you a hypothetical. If, in fact, Caitlin was gone by 1215, that would mean, hypothetically, she would not have been there when John and Karen arrived 15 minutes later. Objection. Sustained. When you were interviewed by Officer Lank that morning, other people were in the room, not just you and Officer Lank, correct? Yes, I wouldn't consider that morning to be an interview with Officer Lank. More of a conversation? <laughs> yes. During that conversation, Nicole was there? Yes. She was in your shot? Yes. When she was, being, when she was involved in the conversation, you were within your shot? Yes. Brian Jr. would have been within your shot. Brian Jr. wasn't downstairs most of that morning, so he may not have been. But he was there for part of the morning. Yeah, but I don't, I'm not sure that he was there at the time. My, um, uh, Lank, Officer Lank was asking questions. The fact of the matter is, notwithstanding what Officer Lank wrote that you said about Caitlin leaving at 1215, she did not leave at 12.15. Isn't that right? She did not, no. As a matter of fact, in truth, except for the people when did who she leave? lived there, Caitlin was the very last person to leave that location that morning, correct? I believe so, yes. And she's admitted that she did not leave until nearly 2 a.m., 1.45, correct? Objection. Sustained. 
you're aware that she did not leave until 1.45. Or the- I thought the last person to leave was, oh, no, sorry. Was Brian Higgins one of the first first persons to leave? Thereafter. Is that right? I believe that's around the time, yes. Were you trying to cover for Caitlin so your daughter would not be wrapped up in this investigation? No. But as a reminder, when you were spoken to by the first two officers who discussed who was in the house, you never mentioned Colin was even there, correct? Jackson. What did he say about Caitlin with uh, Michael Proctor's interview? Going over that. Next question, please. Sustained. If Colin was gone, just like Caitlin was gone, that would eliminate them from ever being at the house at the same time as John O'Keefe and Karen Dewey, right? Objection. Sustained. On January 29th, about 11.30 or 12, we talked about the fact that you were interviewed by Michael Proctor at Jen McCabe's house, correct? Yes. You knew at the time that the state police were looking to interview Jennifer McCabe about her uh, understanding of what was what had happened the night before. Objection. Sustained. You were notified that the state police were going to interview Jen McCabe. Objection. I'll allow it. Were you notified that? No. You knew the subject matter of an interview with Jen McCabe was going to happen over the subject matter of the night before was going to happen over at Jen McCabe's house. That's why you went there, right? Objection. No. Hi, Nicole. Yes, it is. Isn't it true that you knew you had been notified, uh, or at least you believed, that an interview with Jim McCabe as part of an official police investigation was going to occur at her house? Yes. You were not asked by the police to join her, correct? No. Um, You had no official reason to be at Jim McCabe's house, correct? What do you, I don't know what you mean by official reason. You were not working the investigation yourself. No. You were with us, correct? Right. So you had no official reason to be at Jen McCabe's house during an interview with Jen McCabe. Objection. No, y'all allow it. No. So. Why were you there? But before she gave her statements, you made sure that you were right there to monitor that interview and exactly what was said, correct? Objection. Were you in her house when Jen McCabe was interviewed by Michael Proctor? Her house, yes. You had gone to her house, correct? I did. You went there before she gave the interview? Yes. So you were there in her house during the entirety of her interview, correct? I believe so, yes. And importantly, Jen McCabe knew you were in her house during that interview, correct? I assume she knew, yes. I mean, you're in her house after all. Yes. Why did they do the interview at her house? <laughs> Not the police station. I want to get back to 34 Fairview, if I could. In the early morning hours of January 29th, Brian Higgins directly followed you into the house after you walked in, correct? Could you rephrase that? Sure. You walked in, even though there, there was some moving of cars, you were the first one to walk into the house. And Brian Higgins followed you. Yes. Um, Nicole and Caitlin then came in shortly after that. I think Nicole and Caitlin probably came in around the same time as me. And, and, then Brian, and then Brian Higgins. Sorry. Did you make another drink when she, once you walked into the house? Did I make a drink? Did you make a drink? Grab <laughs> yeah, pro- yes. Okay. When I say make a drink, did you get a drink? Yes. What, what, did you, what drink did you get? The five I, I don't know. Probably just would have been whatever was at the house, a beer or something. Okay. Did uh, Higgins have another drink? I don't know. What did you do? What did you and Brian Higgins do once you were inside the house? Um, we just kind of hung out, talked. At any point, did you and Brian Higgins go down to the basement? No, I don't remember going to the basement. You don't remember going to the basement, or you didn't go to the basement? No, I didn't go to the basement. Did Brian Higgins go to the basement? Not that I know of. Is there saying the basement's where it might have all went down? And you didn't go upstairs to the second floor, did you? Hey, Snowball. I think I did go upstairs, yes. Isn't it true that Brian Higgins has never been upstairs in your house? Prior to that night? Ever. Including that night, specifically. I don't think that's true, no. You owned a dog at the time, correct? Yes. It's a German shepherd named Chloe. I tell Yes. Mix. Describe that dog as being not great with strangers. Isn't that true? I did describe it that way, yes. You testified that, quote, it started barking because it realized that people were downstairs, end quote. 
right? Yes. Chloe had a penchant for barking when she heard people, correct? No, not necessarily. She did that night. Yeah, I think she wanted to use the bathroom. Well, that's not what you said in your testimony. You said it started barking because it realized there were people downstairs, right? Right. So your German Shepherd, probably a decent dog, guard dog, if she heard commotion and people, she would Hi, bark. Hi, Leela. Objection. Sustained. You can ask it differently. Obviously, if Chloe hears commotion and people, she's apt to bark. That's the only question. No. So just that night out of nowhere, first time ever, Chloe starts barking when people walk into the, the, the house. No, it's not the first time ever, but she didn't bark often. Okay. But she did bark that night, right? Yes. And the reason that you gave under oath for why she started barking was because there were people downstairs knowing about, right? Yes. So in that instance, on January 29th, in the early morning hours, she was barking because she heard people. Well, I can't say why she was barking. Well, you did say why she yeah. was barking. I let her out to use the bathroom, so I think that's probably why. Except your testimony was it started barking because it realized there were people downstairs. I, I, those are your words, Mr. R Albert. Not right. Them. Okay. Do you stand by those? Yes. Okay. How was your weekend, you guys? You did let Chloe out to go to the bathroom, correct? Yes. And then you allowed her to stay downstairs, and you monitored her, monitored her with the others who were in the house. Isn't that right? Yes. As a matter of fact, you testified in that state grand jury, the same April grand jury, April of 2022. So I let it go out to the bathroom. I let it back in. I kind of monitored it a little because we, we usually don't have people over the house and the dog's not. Maybe it's just common for him and his wife to just refer to Chloe as it. <laughs> At first I was like, oh, maybe it's just like an oversight, but I don't know. Maybe they just do that. Great with strangers, period. So I was just making sure that the dog was all right with the people that were over, end quote. Correct? Yes. So in fact, you did keep Chloe downstairs at least for a period of time with people that were over. Right? Yes, for a few minutes, I think. Mr. Albert, after you learned that there were questions being raised about John's injuries and dog bites and scratches, in May of 2022, you got rid of that dog. Did you not? Objection. Sustained. You can ask it differently. At some point, your family got rid of Chloe. Chloe was rehomed in May. And we can use whatever words we want to rehomed, rehoused, whatever. But you got rid of her. She's no longer part of the Albert family, right? Objection. Right. When did you get rid of her? So Chloe was rehomed in, I believe, May. Of 2022. Of 2022. Just months after this, the incident we were discussing. Well, after it was involved, she was involved in a dog fight with another dog out front. Right, but that's also after the incident yes. we were discussing. Yes, May. That's a family pet that you had had for six years or seven years? Approximately six or seven years. Wait, so when they when it was raised that it might have been a dog attack, um, who brought that up? Was it something that was brought up in the news? Was the autopsy like photos shown or... Was he being questioned by the investigator? Was he being like, what, what, like who, who brought it up? I show your explanation just now for having gotten rid of that dog is because it bit another dog and ultimately sent two women to the hospital. Correct. I believe two women went to the hospital. Yes. But you took no action to get rid of Chloe until after you knew that serious questions were being raised about John O'Keefe's objection. Correct. Sustain. Who brought it up? At some point, you did realize there were questions being raised about John O'Keefe's injuries on his arm, correct? Objection. I don't allow that. Did you realize that? I heard some talk about it, yes. From who? Who, 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 who? As of January of 2022, John O'Keefe had never been in your house, had he? John O'Keefe was never in my house before or after that date. Certainly, John O'Keefe, you would agree with me, he would count, were he in your house, he would count as a stranger to Chloe. Never met Hypoth him. Hypothetically, yes. I want to ask a couple of questions about your house. Where are, I know there's multiple bedrooms. Are all the bedrooms on the top floor? Yes. Okay. How many bedrooms? Five. As we're looking at your house, from the street, looking at your house, 
Are your bedroom windows, your and Nicole's bedroom windows, visible from the street? Yes. Which windows would they be? If you were facing the house, they would be far left corner. Upper or lower? Upper. Upper and left corner? Yes. How many windows? Three or two to start a setup? Two. Your Honor, with the court's permission, could I display... Mm, former law enforcement. Yeah, I don't know, because, like, there's a difference between, like, dogs that like to attack other dogs versus a dog that would just fucking just attack a human, right? Because I think, like, if the dog was attacking a person on that May 22 dog fight, um, sorry, if the dog was attacking the person on that May 22 date, I mean, I would be like, okay, then maybe he did attack John O'Keefe, but it seems like the dog was trying to get another dog, and then, of course, people were probably trying to separate and probably got, you know, bit in the process. Is it 66? Okay. We have more history about this doggo. Do you see what Miss Chloe is displayed on that um, on that television? Yes. What does that appear to be to you? Uh, the house at 34 Fairview Road. Okay. Understanding this is a graphic representation, not a photograph. Uh, you... And I think John O'Keefe's body would have been found like to the left over here, right? Where's the um, fire hydrant at? I think the fire hydrant is like to the left more. You see the windows that you just described servicing your bedroom on that uh, photo uh, that uh, graphic. Yes. Are they right there? Yes. Okay, upper left, two windows, correct? Yes. And those overlook what part of the lawn? Uh, the front lawn. Okay, front lawn toward the left side of the house, not toward the driveway, correct? Right, I mean, it's the whole front lawn, but yeah. Right. There's so the mailbox. Toward the left side of the house. The windows are, yes. Are they, are they asked about the view? Right. So the view's the whole front yard. I'm just trying to make the record, the, the spoken record, as clear as possible. Right. They're on the left side of the house. Yes. They overlook, directly overlook, they directly overlook this portion of the lawn, the left side of the lawn. Yes. Furthest from the driveway. Yes. We can take that down. Where's your bed? Or where was your bed inside that? I don't know if it was mentioned if Chloe was a police dog or not. I'm not quite sure about that. As relates to the windows. Because I think that would have been brought up by now. I, I don't think she's a police dog. Maybe a retired police dog? I have no idea. I'm not quite sure. I'm just trying to think of how to describe it. So the bed would be in the middle of the bedroom. Okay. It's a bad question on my part because we haven't done that. Let's do it this way. How many feet from the windows would the closest part of your bed be to those windows? Maybe five feet. Six feet. You indicated that Nicole came to bed about two o'clock in the morning? Yes. Where was the dog? Uh, the dog was in my room. And she was sleeping on a mat in your room. Yes. And that mat is also about six feet from the windows. Yes. Six feet being from me to Miss Little. Maybe this far? Could be, yes. Maybe a little further, but yes. Maybe this far? Maybe. Oh, is he going to say that the dog may have been barking? There was, like, commotion going on outside? But he did say sometimes the dog didn't bark. quiet street, generally. Fair view. Yes. Not an enormous amount of through traffic? No. Not a busy freeway or a highway, correct? No. Um, not an especially noisy street? The street, no. Especially at 6 a.m. on a Saturday morning, right? Right. Where were you at 6.03 on the morning of January 29, 2022? I was sleeping in my room. Six feet from that window? Yes. Was Nicole in bed with you? Yes. Had you taken any medication the night before? No. Were you on any sedatives? No. Sleeping pills? No. Were you wearing a sleep apnea machine? No. Oh, those are the questions that I had, too. I was like, I wonder if they had, like, a setup where, you know, maybe they couldn't hear what's going on. Maybe they had a white noise machine. Or, like, sometimes you're on, like, those, like, the sleep apnea machine where, like, I don't know, you're, like, in deep sleep and you can't hear shit, I guess. Good questions. No. Are you wearing earplugs? No. Or earplugs, yeah. You shortly thereafter became aware that six emergency vehicles, including a fire engine, police cruisers, and unmarked police vehicles, a civilian SUV were all parked in front of your house that morning, correct? Uh, I'm not aware of what type of vehicles were parked there, no. You've seen photographs since this incident? Of the vehicles out front? Right. No. Um, are you aware that those, all of those vehicles had their engines running? No. Are you aware that all, all the emergency vehicles at least had their lights on, flashing lights? No. Were you aware that there were <coughs> first responders outside their vehicles chasing around your lawn? Was I aware? Were you aware at the time? No. Were you aware that there were emergency responders, uh, first responders, who were talking to each other over the din of the wind and the snow what? Uh, to, to communicate with each other? No. You're aware that there were three women on your lawn at one point? 
just only after the fact. And at least one of those women was screaming to the top of her lungs at six o'clock? No. Again, your German shepherd was six feet from the window, correct? Um, I don't know that for sure. If- That's where Matt was. I wonder what the jury think when they went to go visit 34 Fairview, Um, because they went a couple days ago to see like exactly how far everything is or how close everything is. Well, that doesn't mean that's where she always is. She also sleeps in the closet area sometimes. Oh, so now Chloe's in the closet. I didn't say she was in the closet. I said she sleeps in the closet area sometimes. Was she sleeping in the closet area that morning? I don't remember. Likelihood is she's sleeping on that mat five or six feet from that window, correct? Judge, I don't know. Mm-hmm. This is Brown Albert. And your explanation. And by the way, closet is a nice cozy area for dogs to sleep in. Sometimes we've already talked about this earlier that you day. You've already indicated she was barking because she heard people and noises downstairs when, she, when you guys came in the house. Uh, yes. Okay. Was she barking um, that night and your or that morning? Is that you and Nicole and Chloe, the German Shepherd, all slept through the entirety of that commotion? That is a good point because I was going to say, well, okay, maybe, you know, he had a four hour drive um, back and forth from New York. He was probably really tired. They started drinking kind of early. And then his wife, you know, they were also staying up late, probably had to clean up and they might have all been kind of drunk and they probably slept through it because maybe they were hungover, very tired. And, you know, when like I had a night of drinking, I'll just sleep through anything. Right. Or sometimes you're just too lazy to get up. But if you heard a woman screaming outside of your house. I feel like you'd be like, what the fuck is going on? I was like, maybe we should check it out. But I like how he is bringing up the dog, though, because then the dog would probably be able to hear and then maybe alert, be like, hey, something's going on over there. And maybe start barking and stuff like that. Mm. Front lawn. Yes. The dog was like, I'm hungover, too. trained first responder. Yes. Yet during that entire event, Where's the closet? Actually, we do have a layout of his house. I mean, because, I mean, it's possible that maybe the dog didn't hear because she was sleeping in the closet. But, I mean, if you didn't have a white noise machine on or anything, like, playing, like, I feel like the dog would still be able to hear it. Eh, okay. After you were awakened, all that chaos on your front lawn, you never came out of your house. Hi, Tico. To assist or investigate in any manner whatsoever, did you, Mr. Albert? Once I was awakened? Correct. No. We've talked about this a little bit, but I want to ask you a couple of other questions about the, the layout of the house. The house is sitting on top of a basement, correct? Yes. Or was at the time. Describe how you get to the basement from inside the house if you come in the front door. And when I say, I'm sorry to do this, I don't mean to interrupt you. There's two front doors that you go in, correct? Yes. For, for purposes of my question, Mr. Albert, I'm going to talk about the one that's right in front of you, the obvious one, as the front door, and the one to the right of it as you're looking at the house as the side door, okay? Okay. Because I don't know how else to describe it. If you come in the front door, describe for the jurors, where is the basement door as compared to that? So you walk straight ahead. You pass the kitchen, dining room area, opening on your right-hand side, and there's a door on the left. I don't know where I stand on this case, to be honest. Sarah, listen. Listen, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm like just all over the place. Right when we're about to get some clarifications, it doesn't get into it more. And then we move on to the next thing. And I'm like, hello, maybe we'll get to it with the next witnesses. What's going on? I don't know. I just want more clarification. Please. Please. How many paces? The door opens. How many paces to walk over and grab that door handle? I'm not sure. Maybe 10. Sorry, front door or side door? Maybe, yeah. So maybe eight, maybe eight. Trailer is about four long steps, correct? Well, Well, some people are deep sleepers. Like, I bet you my sister could probably sleep through it. But my question now is he brought up the dog because I feel like the dog probably would have heard it the dog probably would have been alerted the dog probably would have started stirring around and pacing and maybe started barking um i'm glad that he brought up the dog because there are people that are psychopaths and they can sleep through alarm clocks that are you know like 
<laughs> yeah, alarm clocks. The the blaring alarm clocks, the one that like rings throughout the entire house. Uh, my sister, when she used to live with me, she would have like three alarm clocks set because she had an issue with waking up. And that motherfucker went to sleep through anything. Okay, so some people are like that. But now we have two people plus a dog. So it's like, what are the chances that all three of them would have slept through that and not made a sound or anything like that? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. You ask paces, so... I you know, six feet, six feet, six to eight feet, maybe. They ditched the dog. They sold the house. That's what the dog thing. That's why I want to see if there's records of it. Apparently the defense tried to get it and maybe they weren't able to get it, which is kind of weird to me. Um, they sold the house. They said that they were outgrowing it. Their kids were growing up. Uh, okay. I can believe that, I guess. And then, um, redoing the basement floor i don't know like i think when you sell houses though like when you're reselling your house like a lot of people tend to redo their floors you know that's like just update the look or if it looks really crummy but you know all that put in together and if we don't have any evidence or any records to really back up some of the things it can look very odd and you're just kind of like hmm so that's why I'm still giving them a chance to produce some documents to support some of their claims. But, you know, if we keep having coincidence over coincidence over coincidences and we don't have anything to back it up, um, it, it doesn't look good. Um, I, I could imagine the jury could also be kind of giving them a side eye as well. Yeah, exactly, Rain. This case from exactly how important it is that initial investigation is done correctly and evidence are collected. Yes. Like, please, let's do proper interviews. Let's split people up. Bring them into the police station. Let's have the body cam footages on. Let's record the interviews. Let's do all this. Let's have documentation. Blah, 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 blah. I feel like there's a lot of stuff that we just either don't have or we haven't gotten there yet. Um, I'm giving them a chance to produce some of the stuff. But being, being fucking, oh, wait, my sister's here. Shit. <laughs> I can legit sl sleep through an earthquake. So I have three alarm clocks and a light clock. I sleep through all of the psychopath. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you have good sleep and deep sleeps. Okay. I'm a light sleeper. So I could fucking, I could, I could, I, I could hear everything. But if I have a will to go back to sleep, that will would definitely, I'll be like, I'm going back to sleep. But yeah, I hate being a late sleeper sometimes. It is annoying. But the good thing about that is I don't usually sleep through alarm clocks, but I do have the bad habit of doing the snooze button. Not good. I missed my um my college exam once by doing no actually no no I missed the college exam because I think I forgot to set no 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 I set the alarm clock but sometimes if your audio is on all the way low like if you manually put it on low um your alarm clock will go off so that was that was that was sad. All right, Mr. Jackson. What was the basement used for in January of 2022? Um, so the basement. They had a uh, weight room in one of the rooms, and the other room was nothing at the time. Um, it had been damaged, or water damaged through an overflowed toilet. So part of the flooring had been ripped up? Yes. And that opened up some slab concrete downstairs? Yes. There was also some plywood downstairs? Yes. There were a couple of mats where the actual weights were, so they're not slamming down onto concrete? Yes. But there was a good amount of that floor that was just exposed concrete? Yes. The workout equipment would include things like Barbells, dumbbells. Yes. My brother sleeps through everything. <laughs> the other day, a lightning hit near in the house. Entire house shape. My brother didn't even bother us. <laughs> didn't even notice. Uh, uh, my brother set the smoke detector off at 1 a.m. When we were in second and fourth grade, my mom stripped through the entire thing. He and I thought the house were going to burn down and mom wouldn't wake up. It was scary. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the good thing is if you have parents that can sleep through anything, it makes it easier to sneak out of the house. <laughs> heavy weights yes heavy bars yep made from metal yep hi studio once you're down in the basement by the way there's two flights that you go down at angles to get to the basement a series of steps a landing take a left another series of steps and you stand on the basement Yes, not a not a um, long stair staircase, very small. But right, I mean it's narrow and tight. But in other words, you don't just walk straight down a staircase. You go down to a flat, to a landing, turn left, turn a little, go down, turn left again, and now you're in the basement. Yes. If you wanted to move something large or heavy out of that basement without having to go through the house, could you do that? Would you use my door? I'll allow it. 
Could you rephrase the question? I'll say it again. If you wanted to move something large or heavy out of that basement without having to go through the main house, could you do that? Yes, I mean, it would depend what it was, obviously, how, right. how big it was. Or... How would you do that? Um, there's a bulkhead door you can use. Got it. Where does that bulkhead door come out? A what? It comes out to the backyard right at the kitchen area. You can, you can see it from the kitchen. And right. To... What's the door called? A bulkhead door? A Vulcan door? To the left of that is the side fence. Yes. And directly through that side fence is the front yard. Yes. The same side of the front yard as John O'Keefe's body was found. Yes. Brenner, I would ask um, at this point to mark a video. Bulkhead door? Is that a jersey? Uh, so not jersey. Is that a Boston thing? Yes. <laughs> or is that a house thing that I've never heard of? I had a party at the house one night when she was asleep. I got busted because one of the stoner friends left her pipe on the kitchen counter. <laughs> no. Did y'all ever uh, siphon alcohol or like liquor from your parents and then try to replace it with agua? <laughs> Thinking your parents Jackson, can't taste like the difference. The That'd be great. Mr. Ammonia Robert, has uh, a strong smell though. Uh, just my attorney. Yes. What am I going to visit you in Dallas? Dallas? Dallas is going to be in Dallas in July, I think. I don't know if I'm going, though. Mr. Albert, if you could please tell me if you recognize what's depicted in that photograph. Yes, it's the uh, bulkhead stair stairway. Is that the stairway that you earlier described for the jurors as servicing the, the basement going into the backyard? Yes. Yes. Bulkhead. I would have asked to have this part this. New word of the day. Thank you. Oh, Comic Con? Nerd. <laughs> have you ever been to Comic Con before? Is that the one that has uh, a location yes. in San Diego? Okay. Do you see the. Oh. It's depicted on the, on the television screen. It's yes. like the horror that, movies. It's the same uh, as what you're holding right there, that, that exhibit. It does, yes. That is okay. creepy. I'm direct your attention, if I could, to the lower left portion of this photograph. And right there. Do you see that? Tell me what that is. I can't. Let me, let me highlight it one more time, right there. Maybe it's easier if you look on your What photograph. is that? Can we remove the banner are you, are you, um, crime? referring to the doorknob? Yeah, I got I got it here, yes. Oh. I'm sorry, I sort of hidden on that photograph, so I apologize. <laughs> Tornado cell, um, yeah. <laughs> is that the door that swings open or closed to close off the basement? Yes. Then if you open that door, it's in the open position now, correct? Yes. So the photographer is standing in the basement looking toward the doorway, correct? Yes. Then you climb... Seven or eight stairs. Yes. And that bulkhead door, which is where all the light is emanating, how does that open? So the bulkhead door opens straight up. Okay. And Hello. In that photograph, it was hinged toward the house and it would open up like a, I don't know, like a sandwich or something. <laughs> it opens straight up to the uh, bay windows that are in the kitchen. Got it. Okay. Um, okay, that's all I need for that photograph. <clears throat> He said, like a sandwich. Stop well, it, you're I making me a, hungry. Uh, flash drive with a video on it. I'd ask that this be marked as next in order. Court's permission. Like Assuming a sandwich. it's the same one, no objection. It's the same one. Okay. What would be a better. Mr. Turn. Albert, I want to ask Not you a to take a look in just a second at a video and then describe if you recognize what's in that video. I'll probably play. Maybe five or ten seconds of it, and then pause it. That's okay. okay. The sandwich is more like a hinge, yes. right? <laughs> or like a sub. Pause. Jesus, why is it shaking so much? Do you recognize what's depicted in that video, at least up to that point? Oh, I get it now. Okay. No. Does that look like your basement door, although the bulkhead doors have been replaced to be different? The whole thing looks different to me. I... Let's go to the video. 
So there's another door that leads to the bulkhead doors. Pause. Ooh. Now you recognize what's depicted in the video. Yes. What is that? So that's my back, was my backyard. Okay. And what area is over to the left over here? Weed whacker? Oh, door. That's um, a gate. Okay. And what does that gate open up to? To the front yard. So the area that we're looking at right now, <clears throat> where the, the photographer is standing, is the backyard? Yes. Now, having seen that, notwithstanding the way that the bulkhead doors open, now do you recognize what was depicted at the beginning of the video, <coughs> which was that staircase? Yes, the, the, the downstairs door, the door itself, the wooden door itself also looks different. Okay, so, but it is... But, but it is the stairway, yes. Going into the basement? Yes. Or coming out of the basement? Yes. So in other words, another way to put that is that represented the ingress and egress through the bulkhead to the basement. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and play this. When was this video taken? Oh, it's like springtime. Got some pink flowers on the trees. No snow. Oh, I see. So they're trying to show that, like, okay, if John O'Keefe was in the house, something went down in the basement, they would have carried him out like this, and they would have probably just dumped him right in front of the lawn like that. Okay, I don't know. I just feel like if you're trying to get rid of a body, why leave it on your front lawn, right? Why not leave John's body elsewhere or transport his body or I don't know. Okay, that's where the defense is getting with this. Because then this would have been where John O'Keefe's body would have been found. And then I think they would have to go to the right, though. I think John O'Keefe's body was found to the left of the flagpole if you're staring at the house. Mm-hmm, French doors. Okay. Did you recognize what was depicted in the video? Bring the lights up. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you rec recognize what was depicted in the video as it continued to play? Yes. Describe that to the jurors, please. Uh, it looked like the video was from walking from the backyard towards the front yard. So the video started at the front yard door. Wasn't he found on the other side of the house, though? He was found roughly where the camera ended, but I think he was found towards the left of the flagpole, though. I think. If the taillight doesn't fit, you must... <laughs> with the, the fence, went through the fence, and right up toward the flagpole, correct? Yes. Thank God. Is that an accurate representation of the layout of the house when you lived there on January 28th, 29th, 2022? Yes. With the exception of the bulkhead door having been replaced and maybe the basement door. Yes. By the way, nobody wanted to transfer the body to the vehicle. That would tie them to it for sure. They're cops. They would. But then, like, on your. It's still in front of your house, though. Why not just put him on, like, the street somewhere, walk a little more down? Because um, where John's body was found, there's no street lights there. So I think they could have been like, you know what? Let's just dump him on the neighbor's yard. Yes. Perfect. The 34 Fairview house had been in... But, you know, what have, we, what have we learned from all this, right? From watching trials in general or, like, court cases or just stuff in general, right? Not all criminals are smart. There's no such thing as a perfect crime. Sometimes you just overlook things when you're in the heat of the moment, I guess. But I just feel like they, like, them having, like, you know, you have two people that are, like, law enforcement that was, like, maybe involved. I feel like, yeah, I'm not going to leave him in front of my house. I'm just going to dump him maybe over here. I don't know. Her family... At that time in 2022, for two generations? Uh, my parents built the house in the late 70s, 79 maybe. So if your parents are one generation, <laughs> you and your family are another. The only reason I can think of the putting the body there is they didn't know that he was going to die. Um, well, that would be even more weird, right? If he wasn't going to die, then he would just wake up and tell them everything what, uh, everything that happened. It seems kind of suspicious someone sees you dragging a conscious 6'2 police officer down the street. I mean, on the other side of their fence, there was railroad tracks. They could have just chucked him over there as well, right? I don't know. It just seems very odd. But at the same time, you know, sometimes when people do things, um, they're not they're, you don't really think of these things at the time. Other generation, two generations. Right nearly maybe actually a little more than 50 years half a century that what, I, what it, it was the albert home yes 
The fact is, you listed that house for sale for the first time ever in November of 2022, correct? That's the time we listed it, yes. Just months after John O'Keefe was found on your lawn. Objection. Steve? Mr. Albert, is that timing, according to you, a coincidence? Is what? Is that timing a coincidence? Well, that's not the timing, actually. We contacted the realtor in 2021, finally listed it in 2022. Also, you know, the, the him contacting the realtor, uh, I want to know the context of the email or whatever it was, right? Um, I'm a, oh, maybe it wasn't an email. Maybe it was just a phone call. I mean, miss, would it, wouldn't it be good for Mr. Lawley to have the record of? Be like, oh, this is when you contacted your real estate agent, right? Here's an email. Here's a phone call. Here's a text message. But I don't know. <laughs> So that would be that would be pre-incident. We so need proof. The listing coming nine months after John O'Keefe was found dead in your lawn, dying in your lawn. That's just coincidence. You had this in place long before that. Objection. So I'll sustain the question. You can ask it differently. Sure. All I'm asking is the timing. November of 2022, listing that house for sale for the first time in November. That in your mind is just a coincidence. It's not a coincidence because we started trying to look into selling the house in 2021, which was the few months prior to the incident. On January 28th, 2022, you were still a, an active Boston police officer, correct? Yes. What was your job title in January 2022? Sergeant detective. That means you not only respond to incidents, uh, you actually conduct investigations as a detective, correct? Oh, he's a sergeant detective. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was just uh, a regular police officer. Yes, primarily uh, fugitive investigations. You have initial mm. training in order to hold the title and hold a position as a detective. Is that right? Yes. Not just a regular patrol officer. You have to have special training to get to the rank of detective. Is that right? Yes. As a sergeant detective, that's above a regular detective, in, indeed, because you're a supervising detective. Is that right? Yes. You I thought he was going to say you're a super detective. <laughs> I'm sorry. Experience and, train, uh, experience and training in order to hold that position as a supervisor in the detective spot as well. Yes, the, the civil service tests for the rank, but yes. And you've investigated crimes. I mean, I, I'm guessing just a ton of different types of crimes, including assaults, uh, manslaughters, homicides, kidnappings, things of that nature. No. You've never uh, investigated anything like that? No. So what, what's the... Uh, if you ask me, they did a great job confusing the scene. If that was their goal, they succeeded. Who? Law enforcement? Um, him? The accused are the lawyers. Who are we talking about? The, the parameters of your investigative skills as you held that title of sergeant detective. So my parameters were investigating fugitive investigations. That was my specialty, I guess you could say. So you've responded to, obviously, to countless incidents and scenes as both a patrol officer yes. as well as a detective. Yes. Uh, you've supervised the investigation of the, at least the fugitive type of, of, of crimes, correct? Yes. Fugitives trying to thwart investigators to try to find them, right? Yes. I mean, that's, that's their whole, it's the cat and mouse thing, right? Right. Um, you being the cat, correct? Sometimes. Some, yes. Um, you're also trained in techniques, obviously any detective would be trained in techniques that culprits might use or suspects might use to sort of cover up investigations. I'm sorry, to cover up crimes, to thwart investigations, correct? Objection. Do you have that training, sir? No. So you, in all of your training, 30 years as a boss. Oh. As a sergeant oh. detective, you don't have any training in what techniques criminals might use to try to cover up their, their conduct? No, I've never gone to a training for criminals to cover up conduct, no. Never been trained in the fact that, I don't know, somebody might want to clean up blood at a scene? No. Objection. What about sanitizing a location? Objection. I'll allow it. No. What about getting rid of electronic data? You've got to have training in that. No. In other words, the fugitive that you chase down and try to find... You don't try to utilize electronic data to <clears throat> go after them? Sometimes we, we do, but I don't have any training in, in it per se. Things like GPS data and phone calls and text messages. I also want to know if anyone had any injuries. So anyone that went inside that house or was inside the house that day, did anyone there have injuries? Um, that's what I'm going to keep an eye out for for this trial. Locations, things of that nature. Obviously. Yes, yes. Clear. These are all things that, at least those things, are things that if you didn't have formal training, you got on the job training and just have common sense about how to go after these type of 
this type of evidence, correct? Yes. Sir, you had an iPhone with a number ending in 0888 back in January 2022, did you not? Yes. How many years did you have that iPhone as of January 28, 2022? Of several years, I'm not sure how many, but multiple years. And Mr. Albert, you were notified by the Commonwealth that on September 23rd, 2022, in the fall of 2022, a judge specifically ordered that you were to preserve that phone. Objection, Your Honor. Correct? I'll see counsel at sidebar. <laughs> oh, that's right. There were something about his phone number. I don't know. I heard some rumblings about that. Tell us more. Something about his phone number. He has two different numbers. <laughs> Defense is convincing you Karen is guilty? How so? Hi, CMV. Good morning. How are you? Ah! Oh, is the jury leaving the room? Hey, Karen. Oh, I was referring to the cops are all there. I feel like it was definitely the people that came afterwards. Right. And I am going the to investigating see if, um, if, if his counsel here, he has a right to be present in the courtroom. Okay, we're, we're caught with the live. I guess his lawyer's in here. Is that who they're referring to? All right, let's get into the phone number business. She looks like a who? Oh, Karen Reed looks like AOC with a white version. I could, yeah, I could kind of see that. Yeah, I could kind of see that. Yeah, yeah, I actually can see that. All right, whoever we're waiting for, can they hurry it up? Can they run to court, please? I was gonna say, can they pull up? Wait, what's going on? Now we're back to the fan. Oh, fan, how are you doing today, fan? How's the view up there? You got a great up, up view of everything. Um, Who was it? Oh, Fanny Willis. Fanny Willis, when she found out that they mentioned her, she ran her ass to the courtroom to testify. <laughs> uh, except Karen Reed has like less crazy eyes. You think AOC has crazy eyes? You're waiting for the witness's lawyer. Why was he not like outside the courtroom on standby? It's like, he's probably got some other stuff to do. Now we gotta wait. Uh, waiting, 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 waiter. Actually, no, your client is testifying on the stand right now. You should be nearby. Where are you? <laughs> Am I just being too harsh? I'm just being impatient, aren't I? I might just be impatient. I might just be impatient. AOC looks wild. Oh, I don't know. I, from what I've seen of her, she looks normal. I've never seen the crazy eyes or anything like that. Maybe I haven't seen enough of her. He a fan. He a fan. He a fan. Kendrick Lamar. I thought you didn't like Kendrick Lamar. You sure know a lot about his music. All right, y'all. We're still in the cross-examination. It's Brian Albert. Who do you think it's going to tell? Oh, wait. Actually, hold on. Someone, someone sent the... Witness list. Um, the Karen, we have a witness list. So I want to know who goes next. Maybe his daughter, Caitlin. Maybe Brian Albert Jr. Also, I don't. Well, Caitlin, I definitely open the book. Just kidding. Why is this not loading? Hi, right, so they're back. Yeah, so you can have a voir dire. Voir dire time. Albert. Um... You are currently represented by Mr. Hine. Yes. Seated behind me. Gentleman in the, yes. in the gray suit. Might as well voir dire. Va a little. Um, without telling me anything you've ever communicated with him, when did you hire him as your lawyer? I'm not exactly sure of, of the date. Give me a time frame. Let's see if we can narrow it down. 2022. Um, 
just not sure the exact date or even I think a vaudeer, I think we normally hear it as a proffer, right? Where the jury's not in the courtroom right now. They're taken out and they're gonna ask some questions. The judge is gonna see what she's gonna allow and not allow when the jury's brought back in. Uh, we did the voir dire process with the paramedic. Um, I forgot her name. McL- I want to say Sarah McLaughlin, but I don't think <laughs> that's her name. I know her name is McLaughlin. Her last name is. But I think that's where we're at right now. We're trying to figure out what the judge is going to allow in for the jury to hear next. Von Dyer, thank you. For the end of 2022? I'm not sure. Oh, I, I believe the prior to some of the other um, testimony that I, I gave. So prior to prior to April of 2022, the state grand jury. No, prior to the test, the other testimony. Okay, that was in June of 2023. That's my question. Did you hire Mr. Henning in 2023 in anticipation of giving testimony in June of 2023? I'm not sure the exact of the exact date. I believe it was maybe the end of 22. I'm I'm not sure. Thanks, well, y'all. Did you get a subpoena for the other hearing? I did. Okay. Did you hire Mr. Henning after you got that subpoena? Uh, I can't say. For, I believe so. Right around that time, yes. Okay. I'm just trying to remember the, the, the time, and I can't remember it. Okay. So you did not hire... Well, you're all right. I think that answers the question. You're not represented in place. I'm going to see a sidebar about the extent of the inquiry. Sidebar right now. Oh, wow. Look how close Karen Reed is to um, John's family. Um, Where is... Where... Where's Karen's parents? Or where are Karen's parents? Maybe they're behind her. That's awkward. Because usually you have a buffer of like one person sitting right here. But I don't know. That's so awkward. She's sitting right there. Look how close they are to each other. Oh, Momo talking shit. Momo always be talking shit. Let's let's be honest. Momo was talking shit and you didn't have anything to say back. You didn't have a comeback. So it took you two hours to finally say something to him. Oh, wait, that was only 20 minutes ago. Whatever. 20 minutes ago, two hours. Same thing. No, 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 no. But here's a questioning what the judge will allow. It's with witnesses and jurors to find out what uh, they know about the case. It happens outside the presence of the jury. Yeah, the jury's not there right now. Jury's like, yes, we get a little mini break. A little stretch break. Oh, boy, that looks really close. I wish we could hear the sidebars. I love hearing um, the arguments. That's my favorite part. Oh, wait, maybe... Oh, I think that's Karen's parents. I think, let me see, Karen, blah, Karen Reed trial parents. Yeah, that looks like him. Oh, I was trying to find a video that I was watching where it was, what do the parents, oh, here it is. For this guy, he was a grave digger and struggling author. Vinny, hello Vinny. Karen's parents, Karen's parents. Oh, 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 here they are, right? That looks, that's, that's her parents right there. That's her mom and dad. That looks, yeah, that's them. Not, uh, yeah. uh, and then they think their daughter is innocent. I wonder if this, who are the rest of the people? I don't know who they are. No idea. Yeah, Vinny! <laughs> this is his. Oh, God. Thank you. Oh, witness list. May I interrupt? Yes. Thank you. Um, you had received, and I want to I draw your attention to 2023 now. I'm sorry. Now I'm, now I'm doing it. The fall of 2022. September of 2022. Yes. Did you receive a notice on Commonwealth letterhead indicating that you were not 
to, de uh, to destroy or in any way manipulate any data on your cell phone. Destroy the phone itself or to manipulate or destroy any data on that cell phone. I, I do not re remember getting a, um, that letter, no. I'm going to read this for the record, Your Honor, if I may, with court's permission. Yes. Uh, did you receive a letter that said, in essence, the, not even in essence, it should be quoted as the following? Show us the letter. Quote, you, Mr. Albert, are hereby notified that the defense in the case of Commonwealth versus Kieran Reed, Norfolk Superior Court, criminal case number 22-117, has filed a motion pursuant to Mass R. Crim P. 17 for the production of any cell phones that you used between January 28, 2022 and February 28, 2022, and or any data associated with those cell phones, period. The hearing on Ms. Reed's motion will be held on October 3, 2022, at 2 p.m. in courtroom one of the Norfolk Superior Court. You may be heard on the motion at that time. You are hereby placed on notice that these cell phones are the subject of pending litigation and you must not alter, delete, destroy, or in any way manipulate any of these electronic data associated with the cell phones at issue. Did you get rid of the cell phones? Did you receive a notice from the Commonwealth with that language? I don't remember receiving that document, no. Uh, were they asking about the attorney because he was going to say that, like, oh, my attorney probably received it, and then I never got notice of that, maybe? But I do wonder if he got rid of the cell phone before he got that notice. You told in any other capacity that you were not to get rid of or delete your cell phone. In other words, preserve your phone. Subsequent to me upgrading my phone, I spoke with the DA's office. So after that, they told me via a phone call that that was the case. So your testimony is you never received the notice that I just read, but you did talk to the DA and he told you to preserve, you were on notice that you were to preserve your phone. After. I'm, After. I, I, I right, don't well, want to say that, Mr. Albert. My question is, did you have the conversation with Mr. Lau? Yes. Okay. When was that conversation, sir? So I don't have the exact date of the conversation. I'm not sure. Who did you talk to on the phone exactly? Was Mr. Lally alone or was it a conference call? It was a conference call. Who else was on that conference call? I believe um, Steve Nelson. Um, Steve. And other, other witnesses in the case were on the, were on the conference call. Can you name those witnesses for us? Please? I believe it was Brian Higgins. I believe Jen McCabe, Matt McCabe, and maybe somebody else, but I can't, I can't recall. Who initiated that conference call? There's some people on the well, I believe it was somebody in the DA's office, so either um, Mr. Lally or Steve Nelson, somebody, somebody like that. Did everybody just call into a central number, a conference, conference line? Yes. Thanks, and Nicole. what exactly did Mr. Lally say to you during the course of that conversation about preserving your phone? Um, during the conversation, Mr. Lally said that there was, that the defense had filed a motion to ask for the phones to be preserved. Mm. And anything else? Um, that's what I remember. That's what I remember him saying. Did you volunteer? That, oh my goodness! I just upgraded my phone last week. Conveniently, I don't have that phone anymore. No. You didn't say that to Mr. Lally? No. You just took the information that he gave you and hung up the phone and went about your business. Yes. Without notifying him that the very phone that he had just ordered you to preserve had just been destroyed days earlier. No, the phone wasn't destroyed. I upgraded the phone. The data was destroyed, sir. Correct. I did not destroy any data on any phone, Mr. Albert. Couldn't they feel so like, let's say, for example, um, you get rid of the phone, but you have the backup iCloud data. Couldn't that data still transfer to the new phone unless he didn't do that? I upgraded when my you, phone. When you upgrade a phone, you know that the phone is set back to factory reset before your new phone is handed to you, correct? Happens every time. I, I don't know that. So if you have personal texts with your doctor, personal communications with Mr. Henning, your lawyer, you're just going to hand that to a pimply faced kid at Best Buy and say, here's my phone? <laughs> what did he say? A pimply faced kid at Best Buy? Excuse me, I used to work for Best Buy, okay? Um, it's not from the Commonwealth, it's from the defense. Well, what happened, it seems what happened was the defense put in a motion to have these people preserve their phones. And then the um, Commonwealth, they put a, they had a letter that they sent out with their letterhead on there. And they sent it out to these people saying, they're like, hey, you know, they're requesting to um, have your phones to be examined at, blah, blah, don't destroy it, blah, blah, blah. When you, when you upgrade your phone, right? I think some things are come over across contacts, things like that, so I, I don't know that for sure. Best you can back up your data, sir, 
Oh, it's unnecessary. The phone data is destroyed for all purposes. It's factory reset, correct? I don't know that. How long do you have a phone? That's an iPhone. Years. How many times have you upgraded your iPhone? M multiple times. Every single time you upgrade it. You know the, the, phone sub uh, the phone prior, the data is destroyed on it, correct? Um, usually my contacts come over and my photos. But when you factory reset, can... Um... You recover that data. I don't want to Google that because that might be size, you know, that might be a little bit weird uh, sus to have in my history. But I don't know. I thought maybe law enforcement can recover it if it was factory reset. But here's the thing, though. If the phone was turned over, getting a hold of that phone, that will probably be a pain in the butt because we don't know what the phone is. Let's come over. So that's a backup. No, I don't have I don't I don't think I have that on backup, but OK. Irrespective, you didn't tell Mr. Lally that you had gotten rid of that phone. I was not asked that, and I didn't tell him that. I see. You felt like if you weren't asked that, you didn't need to volunteer it, even though the conference call was specifically about <laughs> preserving your phone pursuant to a, a judge's order. <laughs> Correct? What was um, the question? You didn't offer to Mr. Lally that you had gotten rid of the very phone that he was telling you had to be preserved due to a judge's order. I did not. And well, you he said his contacts and some other shit came over, so maybe he did do the iCloud backup thing what jacob hi lady how are you doing today Huh? Oh, yeah this doesn't look good okay so when we have this in front of the jury man if it's exactly how it's going right now um i think it will look good for the defense you didn't seek any advice from i'm not asking you for the communications you did not seek any advice from counsel at that time for those purposes i don't believe i did no yeah just one minute. sure I mean, my issue is that not not the really because I mean, like people do upgrade their phones like almost every year when the new iPhones come out. It's the not telling Mr. Lolly about it in the conference call when the conversation pertained to cell phone. Ah. At some point, uh, you indicated, Mr. Albert, at another proceeding under oath. Uh, in relation to a conversation that you had with Brian Higgins about your phone. Quote, I don't recall saying I was going to get rid of my personal phone to Brian Higgins. I may have said that, you know, there's personal stuff on my phone. But I don't recall saying that to him, but I don't know. We had multiple conversations about things. You remember saying that uh, at the roof at another hearing? Yes. You literally admitted at that hearing there's personal private data on that phone. Hence, you got rid of it, right? No. You certainly wouldn't allow some kid at the AT and T store to have your personal private data. You're a cop. No, I assume. <laughs> some kid at AT and T store, some pimply kid at Best Buy. I assume he doesn't have it. Why would you assume that? Because he took the phone and has it. And what do you think happens to the data on the phone, sir? Let's just use common sense. What do you honestly think happens to the data on the phone when you turn it in and upgrade your phone? I'm sure that the they, the data is not there anymore. I'm it's sure. destroyed, sir. Correct. I, I don't know that for a fact. I, I, I know that some things are transferred back to the new phone. You just said, you know the data is not there. Some, some data, I guess, isn't. Yes. No, that's all I have. All right. <laughs> Mr. Lally, any questions? Mr. Lally, <laughs> reel it back in. Let's see what you got, Mr. Lally. Mr. Lally might be like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't know. I'm beat. <laughs> there we go. Okay. No, Mr. Lally has no questions. <laughs> all right. I'm going to take a short recess. I'm going to let this witness, if he chooses to, to have a few minutes. <laughs> All right, Mr. Jackson, go right ahead. Thank you, Robert. Uh, Mr. Albert, you were notified by the Commonwealth that on September 23rd, 2022, a judge specifically ordered you to preserve that phone and all its data, the phone ending in 0888. Is that right? Yeah, at what time are you asking me that I was notified? That day or the next? On the 23rd? On the 23rd and the 24th of September. No. Isn't it true that you were provided a letter by the Commonwealth Jury's back, right? stated the following? Your Honor, if I may read this. Is that, uh, yes, there's no objection. Thank you. Quote, you are hereby notified that the defense in the case of Commonwealth versus Karen Reed, Norfolk Superior Criminal Case, sorry, Norfolk Superior Court Criminal Case, number 22-117, has filed a motion <clears throat> pursuant to Mass R Crim P-17 for the production of any cell phones that you used between January 28, 2022 and February 28, 2022 and or any data associated with those cell phones. The hearing on Ms. Reed's motion will be held on October 3rd, 2022 at 2 p.m. in courtroom one of the Norfolk Superior Court. 
You may be heard on the motion at that time. You are hereby placed on notice that these cell phones are the subject of pending litigation, and you must not alter, delete, destroy, or in any way manipulate any of the electronic data associated with the cell phone at issue. You received, end quote, you received that Oh, yeah, I think Alan Jackson is from L.A. This on either the 23rd or the 24th. Is that I, right? I did not. Governor, I would pose a stipulation. I spoke with counsel uh, off the record, if I may. I wonder what his retainer fee is. You both have An a hourly. stipulation that I haven't seen. We just de determined I'm, I'm happy to approach him. Why don't we approach quickly? <laughs> <laughs> Judge is like, I need to make sure I eat lunch on time. <laughs> <laughs> Kill it quick. Uh, yeah, so Alan Jackson seems to be top criminal defense attorney in LA. Famous cases. How did she find out about him? Alan Jackson. Oh, his name is a little too... Oh, he used to be a prosecutor. Oh, that is that is pretty impressive. He used to be a prosecutor, and now he's a criminal defense attorney. Okay. Yeah, that's impressive. I don't have, an, I don't have access to the Boston Globe. You think he did Weinstein? I'm trying to see his track record. I know. I'm like, I mean, Karen's family must be really well off. Ma'am, yes. I would offer the following stipulation that on either <clears throat> September 23rd or September 24th, the Commonwealth sent a letter on Commonwealth letterhead to Mr. Alberts. I would have loved to see him in action as a prosecutor. Attention, uh, stating exactly what was just read into the record pursuant to the uh, court order dated September 23rd, 2022. Okay. All right, next question. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Isn't it true that you were in fact ordered to preserve your cell phone by the Commonwealth? At some point, I was made aware of that, yes. All right. Let's just get to the brass tacks. Where's your phone? Uh, my phone was upgraded and uh, traded in for a new phone. Your phone was upgraded and traded in for, the, for a new phone? Yes. Okay. Another way to say that is you traded your phone in and got rid of it, correct? I traded my phone and upgraded it, yes. When did you get rid of your phone ending in 0888? I upgraded my phone in September, third week of September, maybe around 20. Oh, really? Trey gets it easily a million dollar defense so far. Second. The 22nd of September. I believe so. I can't be sure of the exact date. So. And wait, if she's found not guilty, can she recoup the attorney fees? How does that work out? According to you, you got rid of the phone that was the subject of a court order preservation the day before it was ordered preserved, right? What's the, what, rephrase the question, please. We have this receipts. Order, just stipulated, this order is dated September 23rd, 2022. It was just stipulated that on the 23rd or 24th, you were then sent a notice to, to preserve the phone. And your testimony is on the 22nd, the day before this all happened, you upgraded your phone and got rid of it in total, correct? I upgraded my phone on, on and around the 22nd, yes. And you knew that all of the data on that phone would be factory reset <coughs> and destroyed. Objection. Do you know that, sir? I do not know that. How many times have you upgraded your phone in your iPhone? I'm not sure. Um, four or five times, maybe. You're aware that when you turn a phone in and you upgrade it, the phone that you turn in... That data is factory reset, meaning it's gone. It's destroyed off of that device, correct? Well, I think some data transfers and some doesn't. We're not talking about a backup. I'm talking about the physical, the physical phone. That physical phone becomes a brick when you turn it in, correct? 
correct that it becomes a brick? I, I don't know. It's effectively a brick. There is no data left on the phone. I'm not talking about backup data onto a cloud. I'm talking about that phone. So the old phone, yes. Yeah, it's just everything on it's destroyed, correct? Right, although some, trans, some of the data transfers to your new phone. And you're aware that the very data that you were ordered to preserve would have been destroyed, you, according to you, the day before. Correct? W rephrase your question or ask me a question. If you're, if you're, are you claiming that you got rid of your phone on the 22nd? You I upgraded phone? my phone around that. I'm not sure if that's the exact date, but yes. So it could, it could have been after the 22nd. <laughs> yeah, because in, um, wait, what was this? In September, oh, it is 2023, hold on. I don't think it was after the 22nd. Could have been the 24th? No. Could have been the 25th? No. So you're absolutely sure that you could not have upgraded your phone and gotten rid of it any time after the 23rd when this judge ordered that it be preserved? No. Because you know that if you got rid of that phone after you had been notified that you were ordered by a court to preserve it, you'd be committing a felony. Objection, Your Honor. Sustained. Is it an iPhone? Um, I thought he said iPhone. Yeah, I think he said iPhone. I think he said iPhone. But I don't know what the jury's going to think about because he said he did it the day before the decision was made and the letter was sent. So you now claim that you got rid of the phone on September 22nd, 2022. Hours before you were ordered to preserve. That's your testimony, correct? Yes. Is that just a coincidence? Um, September 4th was my birthday. The phone was broken and failing. Um, I had planned on getting a new phone, and that just happens to be the day that I got it. Happy birthday. Was that a coincidence? Jeff. What? <laughs> Sustain. <laughs> Did you say at your birthday or happy birthday? Sorry, I think you I remember. At another hearing in June of 2023, that exact question, correct? Whether it was a coincidence. Do you remember that? I don't. You recall being asked, quote, so it's just a coincidence that within minutes, hours, or Objection, days. Objection, Your Honor. Let's hear the question first. Within minutes, hours, or days of you trading in your phone, that phone you had in January of 2022, that you were ordered to preserve it. Answer, yes. Question, that's a coincidence? Answer. <laughs> Sounded like happy birthday, right? Oh my God, the snark. <laughs> yes. Objection, we'll strike. I'll let that stand. I also do wonder, what did the, so the jury, they're all local. I wonder what do they think about this big time attorney coming from LA? I wonder what do they think about him? Do they like him? Is he likable? Are they like, mm, or do you think he's doing his job? That was your testimony, wasn't it? Yes. And that's what you're saying today to these jurors. Just yeah. a coincidence. Yes. Did you and Brian Higgins agree with each other that you're both going to get rid of your phones? Objection. Mm. I'll allow that. No. You told... You testified at the other hearing in June of 2022, quote, 23? I don't recall saying that I was going to get rid of my personal phone to Brian Higgins. I may have said that, you know, there's personal stuff on my personal phone, but I don't recall saying that to him, but I don't know. We had multiple conversations about things, end quote. You remember testifying to that? Yes. So you're not ruling out the fact that you may have told Brian Higgins that you intended to get rid of your phone, correct? No. You're not ruling out the fact that Brian Higgins may have told you that he intended to get, hit, get rid of his phone. No, I don't remember him saying that to me. Your testimony was, quote, I know there were conversations about the phones. I just can't say if he was going to get rid of his phone or not, end quote. You testified to that, didn't you? Yeah, I have no idea what he was going to do. I'm asking, are those your words? Did you testify to that under oath? Yes, although I don't know the co context of the time that they were asking that question. June of 2020. No, not the date of the hearing, but w when they were asking if and when that conversation took place. Does it really matter when it took place? I think so, yes. When you talked to Brian Higgins about getting rid of your phones, when do you think you had that conversation? I don't think I talked to Brian Higgins about getting rid of my phones. Well, you just said 
You can't rule out the fact that you've had conversations with Brian Higgins about your phones and possibly getting rid of your phones. Right? True. Ew, he's from L.A. Everyone not from L.A. True. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think that's what I said. You two discussed the fact that you both wanted to get rid of your phones. I don't remember having that conversation with Brian Higgins at all. Hi, Rod. Your testimony What's was, up? quote, I know there were conversations about the phones, sir. Correct? Correct that that's what you're reading. So, so if you're having conversations with Brian Higgins about... Yeah, because I feel like the statements that he's made in the grand juries, whatever, or the interviews, they don't sound that bad um it's like oh maybe i had a conversation i don't know maybe we talked about phones i don't know or you know i feel like they're not that bad um but you know he's more experienced he's like he's an experienced um prosecutor he's an experienced defense attorney so um I, i'm sure he probably knows the mind of the juries uh, way better than me <laughs> for me i'm like eh, move what along. the heck were you talking about it i don't know the timing of when they asked when those conversations were I can't drink. Robert, so I'm leaving it open to you. I don't care when it was. I'm asking you, have you ever had a conversation with Brian Higgins about your phones, respectively? We may have. I just don't, I can't remember that conversation specifically. Then why in June of 2023 did you testify, I know there were conversations about the phones with Brian Higgins, end quote. Oh, wait, no. Now he's saying, I know that they're... Okay, hold on a second. Maybe this is important. I'm not sure of the context of that. So now you just can't remember. No, I don't think I could remember during that testimony either. I think if you read the whole thing, I, I think I said I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Your quote was, I know there were conversations... This lawyer is a drama queen. I love drama queens. Remember Juan Martinez... That was, he was probably like numero uno when it came to dramatic lawyer. I've never met anyone that can top Juan Martinez. This guy, pretty close, pretty close. But I would say Juan Martinez had more flair and more like, he jumped around a lot and like, I don't know, he did like a bunch of crazy shit. <laughs> Conversations about the phones. I just can't say if he said he was going to get rid of his phone. But I will say it probably keeps the jury engaged when you have someone who talks like this at a witness because they're probably like, oh, okay, I'm awake, you know? This is more easier to listen to than someone that kind of like drones and asks questions like this. Like, what do you think? Okay, so this is your phone, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is like, you're engaged. You're like, I'm here. Where's the popcorn at? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I feel like, oh gosh, if anyone ever has to go up and testify being cross-examined, it looks so scary. It seems so scary. Or not. In right, quote. right. Does that help refresh your recollection? Yes. So now as you sit here and you answer my question, did you and Brian Higgins... No, Elaine didn't have flair, okay? Elaine was just more like, you're just so dumbfounded by some of the things she said did. <laughs> That's a different type of entertainment, okay? <laughs> have a conversation. True, yeah. It's such a shame about Juan Martinez. Yeah. But, you know, he says to this very day that it wasn't um, his fault. He was just he just wanted to step down, but he doesn't admit to what he was accused of. Elaine was a buffoon. <laughs> uh, I'm drinking a core power protein shake. Has 42 grams of complete protein. Chocolate. All right, let's listen. I think if you read the whole thing, I, I think I said I, I'm not sure. I don't remember. Your quote was, I know there were conversations about the phones. I just can't say if he said he was going to get rid of his phone or not. In oh, quote. right. Does that help refresh your recollection? Yes. So now as you sit here and you answer my question, did you and Brian Higgins have a conversation about your phones? I don't remember having that conversation with Brian Higgins. <sighs> <laughs> oh, my God, that sigh. <laughs> Holy shit, that was audible as fuck. All right, let's shift gears. <sighs> Mr. Jackson, you did prove your point, though, so I, I think you want a point for that. Before I shift gears. Have you seen The Best in Show? No, I have not. Uh, what is that? Oh, I love Twilight Zone. So good. I am not aware of that until after the time you're talking about. So without qualifying your answer, answer my question. As you sit here, you're aware that Brian Higgins has also gotten rid of his phone. I know at some point... When? Brian Higgins. Mr. Mr. Albert. Did he? Objection, Your Honor. Can you answer that yes or no, sir? Yes. Okay. Judge is like, come on. Now I'd like to shift gears. 
talk a little bit about Michael Proctor. Did Michael Proctor come into your home at 34 Fairview on January 29th? Yes. Michael Proctor? Let me rephrase the question. I want to make sure we're, I'm not talking about Officer Lang, Officer Good. Right. Michael Proctor from the Massachusetts State Police, did he come into your home on January 29th? He conducted an interview with my wife, and I don't remember if it was the 29th or the 30th. Okay. That's what you're asking. Wasn't that interview on February 3rd? It, I feel like it was earlier than that, but it could have been February 3rd. Okay. Presume for purposes of my question that it was February 3rd that Michael Proctor interviewed your wife. Then he would not have come into your home on the 29th, 30th, 31st, 1st, or the 2nd. Right. And you know from your training, obviously... As the first responder, the first 48 hours of an investigation are absolutely critical, correct? Objection. Oh, first 48 hours. Hold on a second. That's from the first 48 hours TV show. Do you know that, sir? Sorry, I was thinking about the intro in my head. In that context, I, I don't. Hours. Okay, next question. I mean, you're aware there's a TV show called First 48. Objection. Oh, TV show, yes. Do you think the first 48 hours of, of a criminal investigation are critical? <laughs> Objection. <laughs> You do know show. that the longer you wait to properly investigate anything, the better chance that evidence can be manipulated or destroyed, right? You would agree with that? Yes. Did an investigator or any forensics team ever come into your house, ever, to photograph your entire home? No, I wish they had. Did an investigator? Uh, yeah, me too. Mm, we all do. Checking all of us. Did an investigator or forensics team ever come into your house to search for physical evidence? No. Did an investigator or a forensics team ever come into your house to search for trace evidence? No. Did an investigator or forensics team ever come into your house to take carpet samples, flooring samples from the basement, for instance? No. And to this day, you're aware that that's never happened? Yes. Sir, you were in the Marines before you were a police officer, correct? Yes. You're a combat veteran? Yes. How long were you in the Marine Corps? Uh, four years. During the course of your Marine and military training, did you have any training in hand in combat? Objection. But here's the thing. If investigators, I mean, I know we did even, tr they didn't even try, okay? They didn't even try to search the house or get a warrant. But I do wonder, even if they did try, would there really be a judge that would have allowed that? Um, because I don't think there was, I actually wonder what Karen Reed said at the time. Did she say at the time that she saw John go inside the house or was she so hysterical and didn't really give it an answer? Because based on all the other witnesses, everyone just said, oh, he never came in. So, you know, I wonder if they had a way for the judge to approve. Okay, like, you know, go. Yeah, it was found on the lawn of their house. Go inside and, you know, fucking search everything. Uh, I do wonder if they would have been able to, even if, this, even if investigators asked to. I'll allow it. Yes. In addition to your marine training on the subject, uh, did you also receive additional training from the police department through the academy or otherwise? on basic hand-to-hand -hand combat? No. So that's not part of the academy? Um, not hand-to-hand -hand combat, no. Fighting techniques, use of batons, things of that nature? Uh, defensive tactics. Defensive tactics, okay, that's fighting, right? Well, it's not hand-to-hand -hand combat, no. Okay, fair enough, I may be using the wrong word. It's physical, it's training on how to either defend yourself or control another person physically. Yes. I mean, they're not gonna send you out there on the streets completely ill-equipped. They need to know that you know how to defend yourself and how to put somebody in custody that doesn't wanna be in custody, correct? Yes. And that might include fighting. It could, yes. And beyond your marine training and your police training, you're ind independently trained in techniques of fighting. Indep awesome. Have I boxed before? Yes. Okay. Um, and you've trained in boxing. It's not like you just walk up and smack a heavy bag, right? You'd have to rephrase it. You've trained. You're a trained boxer. You're a trained fighter. I've boxed in the past, and I've, I've trained to box, yes. Yeah. I mean, I've hit a heavy bag. Right. But I'm not a trained fighter. You're a trained fighter. All right, so uh, I'm going, there's an objection you were standing, Mr. Lally. Yes, Your Honor. Jurors, disregard that. Mr. Jackson, no comments, just questions, please. Yes, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> now we're going to comment on that? I feel like they should have brought that from the very beginning because he's been making a lot of comments when he's asking his questions, <laughs> which is a very smart tactic. In fact, your boxing skills were featured in the TV show that you were featured in as well, as well correct? Objection. I'll allow that. No. You were, in fact, No. That they were featured in a show? No. You never shown on TV in a ring sparring with somebody? Um, I may have been shown training, but I don't think I was having a boxing match. No. Okay, that's, I, I wasn't suggesting that you were having like a paper. I was asking, is there a TV show that I've showed you in a ring boxing? Well, that's not what you asked me, but if you're asking me that now, yes. I'm asking you that now. I apologize. My, my questions are somewhat, somewhat inartful. 
Yes. You understand the question now? Yes. And you have been shown, I use the word featured, you've been shown on television in a boxing ring. Yes. Sparring. I didn't, haven't seen a video in a while. I'm not, I'm not sure if I was sparring. If we can, Your Honor, with court's permission, can we take a look at Exhibit 53? Okay. Um, <laughs> Did John have a broken nose? I know they mentioned that his nose was like messed up. There's blood coming out of it. Did he have a broken nose? Clip starting at <clears throat> it's time of day 11 47 and 15 seconds. Oh, to yes. Show it to us. Five seconds, maybe. No copyright music, please. Oh, I thought we were going to watch the TV show. Enhanced, enhanced. You see the two men uh, in the foreground? Yes. Who are those two men? Looks like myself and Brian Higgins. Does it look like yourself and Brian Higgins, or is that yourself and Brian Higgins? Yes, it is. Okay. Would you like to play that? Sorry. Looks like he lost a lot of weight since then. Brian looks like a pretty huge dude. Brian Higgins. Oh, so creepy how these these are the last moments of John O'Keefe. Is it intentional to rattle people's nerves? Is a good way. A good way to do it. And also when you're asking someone questions in an accus accusatory tone it makes it seem like they did something wrong I have a couple questions, Your Honor. Would you, uh, let's take it down and you can put the other one up after the question. out of it yes is that what you and mr lally went over in your preparation for your testimony i don't think that we went over it but he showed me a quick clip, clip uh, of it when you say he showed you a quick look he asked questions about it i don't think so no did you give him any answers about it no any explanations no just he showed you the clip and yeah i just said yeah it looks like we were fooling around okay so you did Make an explanation. You've given him an yeah, yeah, I'm, an explanation uh, for it. Right. I said I think we we're just fooling around. Okay. Well, it's the same thing you told us this morning, right? Right. Just fooling around. Yeah, just having fun with my friends and hanging out and fooling around. Absolutely. What were you doing? Describe what you're doing. Um, having fun with my friends, hanging out, just being silly. Okay. Describe physically what you were doing in the video. Um, I was playing around, sort of um, getting in a boxing stance. Okay. Otherwise known as the fighting stance, correct? Yeah, for a second, yes. Okay. And what did Brian Higgins do when you got into a fighting stance? Um, it looked like he was kind of doing the same thing. Got into just... a fighting stance as well, correct? Yeah. What were you two talking about? You tell you talking, right? Yeah, I don't know what we were talking about. We were just being silly, fooling around, having fun. Were you giving him advice on the proper way to get into a fighting stance or a boxing, boxing stance? No. Were you giving him some advice or some, uh, some indicators about how to best position himself if someone is taking a, an aggressive stance against him? No. No. Is he telling you what he thought was a good technique for fighting a boxer? I don't think it was that serious. We were just playing, fooling around. But both of you were in fighting stances, facing off against each other, correct? Yeah, for a second or two. And Mr. Higgins saw him bob his head and start walking up toward you like a boxer might, correct? Yeah, yes. And then you got down, pulled your, your uh, pant legs up, and you squatted down to indicate getting low, that, having low center of gravity, correct? That would not, that, that's indicating being silly. That, okay. And that's then at not. some point, while you're being silly, you then fake a right punch toward him, correct? I didn't notice that, but I'm not sure. Can we take a look uh, at the next part of this clip, which is at time of day, 11.55 and 51 seconds. I'm sorry, 11.54 and 52 seconds. Oh, you're about to see the doctor. Good luck, Nicole. <laughs> Good luck, good luck, good luck, good luck. Okay. Maybe I'll see you later. This is going to be a long cross-examination. <clears throat> or did he see he has a couple more questions left? Okay, there's several individuals crowded <clears throat> around a table. Can you describe who, where you are and where Mr. Higgins is? Brian Higgins is the guy on the right with a hooded sweatshirt and the emblem on the back. I have a pointer. Do you want me to use it? Uh, that'd be great. That'd be great. So that's Brian Higgins, and that's me. Ooh, combining the technology of the state and the defense. <laughs> What's up, Storm? How's your day going? Can't wait for the lunch break. I'm so hungry. One more hour, I think. You see what you just did? Yes. What did you do when you slapped his right arm? What did I do? What did you do? What are you doing? It looks like I'm just being silly fooling around. Okay. 
I, I'm going to ask you for a little bit more physical description. What are you doing? Why are you grabbing him from behind? Uh, I don't really know. Is that a wrestling hold? No. Is that I don't a control think. hold? No, I don't think so. Is that some sort of control hold that you've used in the past? Bear hugging somebody? No. Okay. That's just a silly fooling around with my buddy. Let's go in place. You see what Mr. Higgins just did? I, I did, yeah. When you let him go, what did he do? I don't know. He did some kind of, I don't know, he pretended to knee me or something. Right. Knee to the abdomen? Yeah, I don't know if he made contact or not, but... Mr. Albert, I'm not suggesting my question is that you two are actually in a fight. Right. I'm asking what he's doing. Does it seem to... Does yeah, it yeah I don't... that he's playing like or practicing like techniques in fight? I, I don't know what his intent was. It looks like he's just fooling around just like I was. But if a grown man walks up to you, grabs you from behind, and puts a knee up to your solar plexus, that's probably not the same as a high five, right? I mean, it could be. What's the what in is your question? In terms of friendliness. In other words, it looks like he's practicing some sort of fighting technique. Practicing? I, that's not how I see that. How would you describe it? I would just describe it as him fooling around. We're in the bar together. We're good friends. And we're just being silly and fooling. That's all. There's a number of people in that bar. You would agree with that? Yes. You see anybody else in that video at any time getting physical with one another? Objection. How much of this video have you actually watched? Uh, not much. Okay, then let me ask a different question. From your memory of that night, who are the only two people in the bar that seem to be getting physical with one another? Objection. Can you answer that? Sure. The, the only person I remember being physical. What if any, what Corgi is going to eat at a break? <laughs> You have to add sort of in there, okay? You're missing the sort of. Fire Nitrous, thank you so much for the two. I appreciate it. Thank you for your support. What if any sort of what Corgi's going to eat sort of at break? Go with what's <laughs> fooling around Brian. Okay, uh, play just a little bit longer. I get what the defense is trying to do here. I believe he's trying to show the like, okay, you know, you guys are trained fighters. Y'all have the background experience and you guys are play fighting here. Maybe you're also play fighting back in the basement in your house hours later. Um, but I'm kind of just like, eh, I mean, it really shows that they're just, just fucking kids at the fucking bar right now. I don't know. Wait, I'm home till the storm passes? Oh, what kind of storm is it? Tornado? Snowstorm? What's going on in Texas? Did you see the rest of that video? Yes. No question that you two are being friendly with one another, correct? Yes. You would agree with that? Yes. But it's all, there's also no question that of all the people in that bar, the only two people that appear to be imitating fighting are you and Mr. Higgins, correct? In that video, yes. And uh, is there another video? Well, no, I just don't know what everybody else was doing in the bar. Do you remember anybody else? You know, Julie Albert or... Uh, I don't remember. Nicole getting into a scrap with someone? No. That's just you two, correct? Yes. Mr. Albert, this is minutes before everybody headed to your house at 34 Fairview, correct? Yes. Including John O'Keefe. Yes. Oh, hail? Ugh. Going back to the morning of January 29th, uh, everyone had left your location. This is after you had already arrived, had a couple of beers. Thanks, Leela. Everybody was gone from your location at about 1.45 a.m., maybe a little thereafter. That seems right. Caitlin being the last person to leave? I believe so, yes. Leela's at the gym right now. You can do it, Leela. Push hard. You got this. What did you do to get ready for, for bed, to settle in? Um, I went upstairs and just... Light in bed, the TV was on. I was just kind of watching TV. You have a nightstand? I do. Is it on your side of the bed or Nicole's, or you have one on each? We may have had one on each in that house. Put your phone on your nightstand? No. Where'd you put your phone? Uh, the phone was in bed with me. So your testimony is that you get in bed after being on a road trip all day long, bed at restaurants, bed at bars, then kind of get together at your house, and when you go to bed, you don't charge your phone? No. I had the phone in the bed with me. Why would you have the phone in the bed? Um, we have five kids, um, and, you know, if somebody was trying to call or if I needed to reach them, it's just kind of a habit I do. I put my reading glasses in my phone, 
You want to make sure your phone is charged, right? Is that what you're going to ask next? Sometimes I charge it, but not as a routine, no. So you're worried about having your kids out. They might need to get a hold of dad. So you make sure that your phone is nice and close, but it can just run out of batteries. Well, if it's dying, then I'll, I'll put it in the charger. But if not, I just leave it on the bed. And what about that night? That night, the phone was on the, on the bed. Oh, but then, you know, he did take a New York drive. Like, did you charge your phone while driving from New York? Was it charged the entire time? Do you have a car charger? Because he went to the hillside bar, probably didn't charge it there. And then he went to the waterfall, didn't charge it there. Hmm. No. Well, I remember the phone being on the bed. You have a specific recollection from two and a half years Maybe he ago. barely used it. About the state of the battery charge on your phone such that you know it was in your bed that night. No, I just know as, as a routine, I keep my phone on the bed with me. That's not what you just said. You just said... It depends on whether or not the battery needs to be charged, whether or not you charge it. My answer is that sometimes I, of course, charge my battery. Of course you but I, But I sleep with the phone in my bed. Every single night? Yes, mostly every night. I, I thought you just said four questions ago, it depends on whether or not the phone needs to be charged. Sometimes you, keep it uh, in bed. Sometimes you put it on the charger. If the phone needs to be charged, I charge it. But I sleep in bed with my phone. Where are we going with this? Does the phone need to be charged that morning? I don't remember if it did, but I slept in bed with the phone. You've been on a road trip most of the day, correct? Yes. You've been out at bars that night, correct? Mm-hmm. Is that yes? Yes. You weren't charging your phone. We saw the, the video. You weren't charging your phone at the bar. Right. So when you got home, you clearly put your phone on a charger, didn't you? But I did not. So if your kids needed to get a hold of you, why would, they, why would the phone being in your bed be the assistance of, to you instead of just on the charger at the next day? That's just what I've always done. I just keep it in my bed. My wife, my wife, my wife does the same thing. So now you've got two phones in the back. Yes. Okay. And your glasses? Yes. Right between the two of you? Yes. Got it. Yeah, because um, you would imagine after the day that he had, um, the phone would have probably been nearly wiped by then, um, unless he had a car charger, which maybe. Does your phone have a ringer on it? It does. Ever thought about maybe turning the ringer on just in case the kids need to get a hold of you? Sometimes it's on vibrate. Sometimes it's on ring. It depends. Yeah. It depends on you. you. Just put it on ring. Wouldn't that make more sense to go to bed? I think the point that he's trying to go towards is the sister-in-law calling him, calling the wife, and them not... Well, sorry. I know he... I think he didn't answer the wife's phone. That's contested because apparently um, when the defense did a cell bright phone record thing, it showed that they answered for a couple seconds, but the wife said, I didn't answer the phone. I don't know why it shows that. But I think for him, um, his sister-in-law tried calling him and then he didn't pick up. So they're trying to say like, oh, you didn't hear your phone ring? Maybe? Objection. Can you answer that? All I can answer is that I sleep with my phone in my bed. That's just what I do. And you know what I'm about to ask you, which is why you're saying you sleep with the phone in the bed, correct? Sure. All right. So I that's, that's sustained. That's really fun. <laughs> All right. No side uh, comments. What else is in the bed with you? Your keys, your wallet, any other pocket items? No. Just the phone and your glasses? Yes. And Nicole's phone? Mm. Yes. Right between the two of you? Usually, yes. What about that night? Yes. Sir, did you make any phone calls after you went to bed between the hours of 1.45 a.m. and 6.30 a.m.? Yes. Who did you call? I inadvertently called Brian Higgins. <clears throat> inadvertently? Oh, accidentally? I don't recall the exact time. Butt dial? After, after 2. 2.22 and 35 seconds. Does that sound familiar? Yes. Did it's you speak to Brian Higgins at any point between 1.45 a.m. and 6.30 a.m. that night? No. You say you inadvertently called him at 2.22 in the morning. Yes. How did you inadvertently call him? The well, I don't know guy. because it was inadvertent. So I have to explain that. Well, it's kind of like a butt dial. Kind of like a butt dial. All right. How long have you used an iPhone? Uh, a long time. Um, as a matter of fact, you've been asked this question before, haven't you? Yes. Hence my question. You knew what I was going to ask you. Objection, Your Honor. I'll, I'll withdraw. Um, <laughs> you indicated previously at a different hearing in June of 2023 that you were, quote, hanging out with your wife and you must have butt dialed Mr. Higgins, correct? Yes. At 2.22 and 35 seconds on January 29th, 2022, correct? Yes. 
you were asked how that could have happened, much like I just asked how that could have happened, right? Yes. And in that hearing, you said, quote, I'm not totally sure. Similar to what you just said here. Yes. And here you added that it could have been a butt dial. Yes. When's the last time you had a butt dial? I had a butt dial recently. <laughs> Um, cause sometimes I don't lock my phone and I like throw it in my pocket or, um, I have a strap in my phone and if I don't lock it and I have it dangling by my side, um, a butt dial will happen. Um, yeah, it all happens. You were then called back to, to that same hearing, but at a different date, an ongoing hearing, right? Yes. That was in July of 2023, right? Yes. You then changed your testimony. But and for this, it's like, hmm, but dial or are the coincidence is just adding up, I guess. But I don't know. I feel like, why would he call Brian Higgins at 222? Wait, when did Brian Higgins leave again? Fuck. I forgot when they said when Brian left. Did he leave? Was he one of the first people to leave? Aside from Colin? Said, and I don't mean to be indelicate, but your testimony was then that you were having an, you were in an intimate situation, I'll put it that way, with Nicole at the time. The worst is when you butt dial a group chat <laughs> and then everyone gets a call and it's like, what's going on here? Hello? What's up? You actually dial 911. Andrew has a future by pressing five, five. Wait. Oh, so I was going grocery shopping and then uh, my phone accidentally went into um, the emergency something mode and I didn't know how I did that. Like it was about to doubt. I don't know. It was one of those where it's like your phone blares and then it like calls help from law enforcement or something. I was like, oh, my God, how do you turn this off? I was at an H Mart and it was it was scary. And that's how you butt dialed Brian Higgins, correct? I don't believe I said that's how I butt dialed Brian Higgins. That's the time. I think I said there was a time frame that that was close. Okay. It was a so booty I, I call. I didn't say that, no. A what booty you you were in an intimate situation with Nicole at the time that the butt dial occurred, correct? I'm not sure if you if you have something you can read me or show me. Oh, like him and Nicole were, were doing it? Is it your testimony? Let me just ask. Is sure. it your testimony that you and your wife were in the middle of some sort of sexual or intimate situation, and that's what caused you to butt dial the phone at that time at 222 a.m.? Objection. Oh, and then Brian Higgins heard it on the other line. Oh, no. Well, that's the worst if you butt dial someone and you're in the middle of, like, a sexy time. <laughs> i have to show you uh, an exhibit briefly. Oh, sorry. Yes. No, it could have been locked. I don't think it's safe to assume that his phone yeah, was locked. It could have been unlocked. I'm not unlocked. This was locked. What if he was on his phone doing Sorry, something? Out, Nicole's like, put your phone down, and he didn't have a chance perfect. to lock it, and they get into sexy time. When you're prepared. Then Brian Higgins heard it all. What I'm like iffy about is uh, not putting the phone on the nightstand for it to charge. If you have a nightstand there, you put your phone there. Why put? Why leave your phone in your bed? It gets in the way when you're sleeping. Yes. May I approach? Yes. Just, just the first part of that first. Does that refresh your recollection? It does. Now you can. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, isn't it true that at the other hearing, you indicated that at or around the 222 time frame, you and your wife were in bed together in an intimate situation? Yes, around that time, I think it reads. Um, may I approach briefly, Your Honor? Yes. Well... With the court's permission, let me ask a couple of questions. Do you recall every call that you made between... It depends. Um, it depends because um, you can either turn that off. Uh, I used to have that turned off, and then I thought about what if someone steals my phone? I would want it to like, lock automatically after like maybe five minutes. But it depends. You could turn it off. We don't know if it's like set to one minute, 30 seconds, or it's turned off, five minutes, 10 minutes. We don't know the timeline between when he had his phone and when the sexy time started. I don't know. There's a lot of things we don't know. A lot of, uh, lot of variables. Really? Your wife called 9 on her Apple Watch a few times? Oh, no. How does it happen on the Apple Watch? Say. Oh, 
oh, can't say I'm cancer for yet, but they took one biopsy this time versus six last time. Okay. Crossing fingers. Crossing fingers, Nicole. 1.45 a.m. and the next couple of days. Do you remember every single one of those calls? No. Have you, do you think it would refresh your recollection to look at a log of those calls during that time frame if we're going to discuss those? Yes. Mayor Coach Ron? Yes. Well, we don't know how heavy they were drinking, if they were pacing themselves. And some people can't have sex if you have uh, heavy drinking. Or if you were involved in heavy drinking. I don't know. What was the best way to phrase that? Mm -hmm. Crossing fingers for the best news. Um, with the court's permission, uh, let me know if you need to, to refer to that. Right. Oh, the SOS thing on it. Oh, no. You know, I'm not going to be able to read it right now. I'll do it as you ask. Correct, correct, yeah. Proceeding? I've seen some records. The first page, these are your phone records for the number ending 0888, correct? Yes. Oh, okay, so we get phone records, all right. Um, and these are call records from January 29th? Yes. At 2.22 and 35 seconds in the morning, correct? Yes. Whose number ends in 5421? According to this, it's Brian Higgins. The call at 2.22 and 35 seconds appears to be one second in length. And that's from you to him, correct? It says one second. I don't... That would be the call, the initial call from you to him, the one that you claim is a butt dial. Is that right? Yes. Did that call roll to voicemail and then you immediately hung up? No, I don't, I don't, I don't recall if it... I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Did so it butt dial you, twice? It was a, a butt dial that went to his phone and somehow lasted one second. Right. Okay. Um, then there's a second call. If you look at the second line down, there's a second call at 2.22 and 52 seconds. 17 seconds later, correct? Yes. That call is actually from Brian Higgins to you, isn't it? Yes. And that call doesn't last one second. That call lasts 22 seconds, correct? Yes. Obviously, you know how long 22 seconds is. What's that? You know how long 22 seconds lasts? Yes. So according to your phone records, you placed a call to him, and then 17 seconds later, he returned a call to you that lasted 22 seconds, correct? That's what the records reflect, yes. When you woke up in the morning, you obviously checked your phone. Did you not? Um, I don't know if I did. Are you telling this jury that the call that came into your phone was a missed call, or did you answer it? I did not answer it. So it would have been a missed call? I just know I didn't, I didn't answer the call. So it would have been a missed call? I don't know. I, I, I don't know that to be a fact. I just know I didn't answer the, the phone call. Okay. I missed Wait, so here's what I'm understanding. So he says he accidentally calls Brian Higgins while relations with wife in bed. And Brian Higgins calls back. But when Brian Higgins calls back, whatever defense used to extract these cell phone records, it shows that they were on a phone call for how many seconds was it again? Is it 22 seconds, 35 seconds, 50 seconds? I forgot. It was one of those seconds. But he's saying that he didn't answer. It was a missed call. It's the call. Yes. That's what I mean. Right. You missed the call. Right. It did something on your phone and you just didn't answer. What do you mean? Right. Okay. And again, you're using an iPhone. Yes. I mean, the expert will go up there and explain to us. If you butt dialed Brian Higgins and he called you back and you didn't answer, you would have a very bright red missed call in your call log, correct? Josh. Do you know that? I don't know that. Have you ever missed a call on your iPhone before? <laughs> you armpit dialed your boy. Do you usually put your phone in your armpit? <laughs> yes. And when you go to your call logs, it says I get it. missed call in red, correct? Easy pocket. Your wife calls you and your kids call you. I don't think I've ever noticed that it's in red and I... I so no, I don't know that to be true. You're certainly alerted to the fact that it's a missed call. That you missed the call, correct? If I were to go back and look at my incoming calls, it would probably say missed call, yes. And yeah, of course, if we asked you to show us your phone and show that that was a missed call, you couldn't do that because you've gotten rid of that phone, correct? Objection. System. Did you tell anyone in law enforcement that next day that oddly Brian Higgins was calling you at 2.22 a.m. and you missed a call? No, I wasn't aware of that call. If a call went to voicemail on your phone, you would get that voicemail, correct? You'd get notice of it. If I checked my voicemails and there was a voicemail, I would get it, yes. Wait, so is the defense agreeing that it was a missed call, or are they trying to catch him in a lie saying they're like, oh, you're saying it's a missed call, but it shows 22 seconds? That's my question. Did you get a voicemail from Brian Higgins? No. Which means he didn't leave a voicemail. Right. Which would suggest that you answered the call, correct? Objection. Or he hung up and didn't leave a message. Let's talk for a second about this butt dial. <clears throat> 
You went to bed and you closed and your phone was you closed and locked your phone, correct? Yes. I don't want you to tell me what the passcode is, Mr. Albert. That's important. I want to make sure you, you understand. I'm not asking you to tell me what the passcode is, but at the time, was your passcode a four-digit or six-digit passcode? Four, I believe. And that locks the phone when it's not in use, correct? The phone will lock after it's not used for a while. I don't know the exact timing of it. You're exactly right, Mr. Albert. I said it backwards. The right. phone automatically locks. You have to use the four-digit passcode to unlock it, correct? Well, no. I also have voice, um, I mean face uh, recognition, too, so we can open that way without any passcode. We'll get to that in a second. The phone locks when it's not in use, correct? Yes. And then to make a call, once you open the phone, either through facial recognition or through the passcode, then you have to tap on the phone app in order to open up the phone app, correct? Yes, I, I believe so. Once you open up that phone app, there are only three ways that you can initiate a phone call. Favorites, recents, and contacts, correct? I don't know that. If you tap on a contact, that opens up the contact page or the contact app, right? You know that. Yes. That's where all your contacts are. Yes. They're alphabetized. Yes. You have to either scroll through or do a search and type in the name of the person you're looking for. Right. You didn't do that, did you? No. If you tap favorites, if you have favorites listed, there's a list of favorites. You have to scroll through and tap the one that you want to call, correct? I think so, yes. I'm, I'm not totally aware of that. but Could be listed in recents and also maybe because him and Brian Hankins were together that day. And if you tap on recents, those are the recent, call, recent calls that you've had, you've either received or made. And of course, you have to tap on the contact in the recents list that you want to call, right? Yes. And then, of course, you would have to tap again to end whatever call you initiate, right? Yes. I mean, you don't just say goodbye. You've got to say goodbye and hang up. You've got to tap it to hang it up. Right. So would you agree from a closed and locked phone... There is no physical mechanism by which a person can hit one button and make a phone call. Objection. Sustained message. Are you saying that... What I want to know is, um, what setting did he have in his phone about the phone lock thing? But... I mean, I don't think we have that information. I don't know, because I feel like the jury, if the jury has had times where they butt down someone before, they're going to be like, eh, this might be nothing. Your closed and locked phone, you inadvertently tapped your phone one time, and that initiated a butt dial to Brian Hankins. Objection. Is that what you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. Tell me what you're saying. I, How did you butt dial Brian Hankins? I don't know. I don't know that the phone was locked. Um, I could have been looking through my phone. I but dial people often and make inadvertent calls. Um, I could have hit a last call from him by accident, thus calling his phone. So you were actually awake and on your phone at the time? I was awake, and I could have been looking at my phone. So, Mr. Albert, how did you miss the call 17 seconds later? Well, my wife was in the room with me, and we were hanging out, and I never got the second call from him. So I'm not sure when, what time he called. I'm not sure what I was doing at that second, but I don't know. But it didn't go to voicemail. Well, I didn't get a voicemail from him, no. So it didn't go to voicemail? Well, I don't know that it, I didn't, don't know that it didn't go to voicemail. I just know that I didn't receive a voicemail from him. So if you, okay. So I mean, we're all guessing here, but I mean, he could have called voicemail. We're not all guessing Well, here. you are because you don't know if he left a voicemail or didn't, or at least got voicemail and then hung up the phone. I think one of us is trying to guess. Jack, you're on. Sister, you know what? I want to see how it's like um, what stands out to me is him saying that he didn't know he got a missed call, I guess, because, well, let's say he got a missed call and it was vibrating because he had his phone on vibrate at the time, but he did make a point saying that like, oh, sometimes I have my phone in bed with me because I want to make sure I can hit if my, I could hear if my, my kids call, right? Then your phone wouldn't be on vibrate. However, I know that there is a setting, which I don't know if he has it on his phone at the time, a setting where you have it so people that are on your favorites list, they can bypass the the vibrate thing and it'll actually ring normally. So I don't know. Are yeah, I think we can probably move on from this too. I'm saying it could have been. Are you saying that it was? I don't know. Mr. Albert, you were the only person that was there with your phone. Was the phone unlocked and did you make a call? Objection. Can you answer that? Sure, I, I don't know. And 17 seconds later, again, presuming you're the only person there with the phone, did you answer that call? I did not. You Good thing this guy didn't have an Apple Watch. Call, you can't just look at your phone to answer it. It has to be swiped physically, correct? I think you can, you can hit, I think it comes up green or red for the phone call, whether it's locked or not, and you can hit 
green. Right, but you have to hit a button. Yes. Did you hit a button to answer a call? I, Brian do, I don't. I don't need to talk over you, but please let me finish my question. Did you hit a button to answer a phone call from Brian Higgins at 222 and 52 seconds in the morning? Not that I know of. You do know that that phone will not answer on its own, correct? Yes. And simply touching your butt will not answer that phone. It has to be swiped. No, I don't think it has to be swiped. <laughs> you agree that a 22-second call from Brian Higgins had to have been answered by you. Isn't that right? Objection. Do you agree with that? No. Did Nicole, who else was in the room? Just my Yeah, because the issue is whatever the defense has, it shows that he must have answered the phone for 22 seconds. So... Yeah, I don't know. Myself and my wife. And Chloe. Yes, but Chloe's not a human, so it was myself and my wife. By process of elimination, Nicole didn't answer that call, did she? No. Chloe, the non-human, didn't answer that call, did she? No. So Chloe is who a human. Had to She's a very human. Call, sir. Objection. Can you answer that? I don't remember answering that call. Could have hit the phone by accident, causing it to answer. Okay, okay let's, let's move on from this, Mr. Jackson. Your Honor, if I could have one or two more questions. One more question. Now your testimony is you could have answered the call, correct? No, my testimony is that I don't know. You're asking me how it could have answered, and I'm trying to answer your question. At a prior hearing in June of 2022, you were asked this exact question, and you answered, quote, yeah, it's only possible that it's me, end quote, correct? I don't recall answering that way, but I'm not sure. And you were also asked, after being confronted with this, these records, quote, I guess I could have talked to him, meaning Mr. Higgins. Correct? I don't, I don't recall saying that, no. Let's move on. Well, they don't have the phone itself. They just have the call records. And I wonder if it's like, a, I don't know, whatever service provider he has. Is it call records from them? Or, because is Cellbrite, would you actually need the physical phone in order to do a Cellbrite extraction? Because I think that's what the defense used to uh, extract information from his wife's phone. So I'm assuming they're probably just looking at a phone bill that shows you have any calls you made, incoming, outgoing, and then how long they lasted. Conversation with Brian Higgins about a 2.22 a.m. phone call. That next morning, while everything was going on, I mentioned to Brian that I may have butt dialed you last night. Sorry about that. Did the two of you agree that you were... Mm, the time limit thing, I wonder if that's only like a civil case thing. Um, I can't imagine there being a time limit for a criminal case. Yeah, I don't know. I want to both say those calls were butt dials in order to cover up those calls. Objection. You can answer that. We did not say that. But let's be clear, since then and now, you've gotten rid of your phone, correct? I upgraded my phone, yes. <laughs> and since then and now, Brian Higgins has gotten rid of his phone, and you're aware of that as well? Yes. By the way, you indicated that you were awakened in the morning by Jen McCabe about 6.30, correct? Yes. And when you woke up, you said you grabbed your phone to make a call. Is that right? No. Yeah, hopefully uh, the uh, prosecutor will go up there and clarify. So Caitlin says, I wonder if the duration counts like an actual answered call or if it counts as it's like how long someone is waiting while it rings. Like, how is it counted on a call log? My question was, if it goes to voicemail, does that count as a duration? It shouldn't count, but does it count as a duration? Isn't it true that you grabbed your phone and called, they call at 7.20 in the morning? Yes, but that's not when I was awoken by my sister-in-law. Sorry, that, that wasn't my question. After Who do you, you call? After you're up, you right. started making calls. Right. My question is, what was the first call you made at 7.20? Can I look at this? If that refreshes your recollection with the court's permission? Yes. At you already checked without the court's I called permission. Brian Higgins. Mr. Albert, you have six siblings and five kids, right? Yes. You have in-laws, cousins, huge family, correct? Yes. But on the morning you find out that John O'Keefe is laying dead or dying on your, on your lawn, the first call you made at 720 was to Brian Higgins. Well, I think by that time, 720, he already had people in his house. And so Brian Higgins was probably one of the people that was over that night hanging out where John O'Keefe was and then not at his house at the point, I'm assuming. Because I think at this point, Jen McCabe's already there. Maybe Matt McCabe's is there or on his way. What time did um, Julie, the aunt with the donuts, come by again? Is that right? Yes. The same person you had a call with, or at least the logs indicate you had a call with 
at 2.22 in the morning. Correct? How long did that call yes. last? During that 7.20 a.m. call, did you two discuss the 2.22 a.m. calls? No. I thought you just said that you told him, oh, I think I may have left out. Yeah, that was later in the morning when he came to the house. Not on that 7.20 a.m. call? No. What did you talk about on that 7.20 a.m. call? I informed him of what was going on at my house. We were out the night before, and I thought it was important for him to know what had happened. Mr. Albert, I have a, a couple of more questions about the, the phones or the phone usage that morning and, and in the day, throughout the day. Um, you called Brian Higgins at 7.20 a.m. for one minute and 56 seconds, correct? Yes. One minute and 56. Brian Higgins called you at 7.30 for five minutes and 47 seconds. Yes. You called Brian Higgins at 7.57 a.m. but for 12 minutes and 33 seconds. Yes. You then called your brother, Kevin Albert, at 9.40 a.m., and spoke for one minute and five seconds. Yes. Chief Berkowitz called you at 9.50 a.m. and left a voicemail. Is that right? Um, he didn't leave me a voicemail, but I think he called me. You called Chief Berkowitz back at 9.54, four minutes later, and spoke for four minutes and 40 seconds, right? Yes. You called Jim McCabe at 11.30 a.m. Is that right? Yes. Jim McCabe called you back at 12.20 p.m. You spoke for seven minutes and 52 seconds. Yes. You called Kevin Albert again at 2.01 in the afternoon and spoke for eight minutes. Yes. Oh, if only we could extract the memories from Chloe's mind <laughs> and get what she saw and heard you called Kevin that Albert night. at 6.45. I'm sorry. Uh, you called Brian Higgins at 3.24 p.m. and spoke for six minutes and five seconds. Is that right? And if it refreshes your recollection, there's a second page, second log. You'll turn your attention to the 3.24 p.m. time frame. Trying to find it. Take your time. Well, at least Chloe wasn't after a chicken this time. 3.24 p.m. I see it, yes. And there's a second call. You call Brian Higgins at 6.12 p.m. Speak for a minute and seven seconds, right? Yes. And then the third one on that page, you called Brian Higgins at 6.35 p.m. Spoke for 10 minutes and 12 seconds, correct? Yes. Turning back to your call logs, you called Kevin Albert at 6.45 on, the next, uh, on that same day. Spoke for about 16 minutes. Yes. Then on the next day, January 30th, you called Chief Berkowitz and spoke for a minute and six seconds. Yes. And the following day, you spoke with Jim McCabe, who called you at 8.04 p.m., correct? Yes. And finally, Chief Berkowitz called you at 1.48 p.m. on February 1st, right? Yes. Three days later, you spoke again to Brian Higgins at 8.48 a.m. Is that right? Yes. The subject of these calls, Mr. Albert, were all about the fact that John O'Keefe was found dying on your yard, on your lawn, on January 29th. So now the defense is showing that a lot of these people who could have been potentially involved or were one of the few people or one of the many people who saw John O'Keefe last, um, they had time to talk with each other after the fact and then maybe get their story straight or just to discuss about it, blah, 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 blah. 2022, isn't that right? I don't know the subject of, of all these calls, no. You had to have been talking about that event. Of course. It was a horrible situation that was going on. Everybody was distraught. And there were a lot of phone calls. This, yeah, makes sense. this call log doesn't encompass all the phone calls. No, it doesn't. There are a lot of phone calls being made to a lot of people because of this horrible situation. And the point is, Mr. Albert, those many calls that you just described, especially as they pertain to Brian Higgins, Jim McCabe, Kenny Berkowitz, your brother Kevin Albert, were those many calls an effort to get stories straight at the time? No, absolutely not. Were those many calls an effort? I'm going into the jury. Um, we're going to send the jury out. Chris, actually, why don't we why don't we take the lunch? Lunch break. We got an early lunch break today. All right. You you are muted. We're taking a lunch break. Uh. So they'll probably be back. Ten thirty a.m. I guess. Okay. Man. Um. Well. That's cross-examination. We spent the first half of our day 10 cross-examination of Brian Albert. What are our thoughts so far with this testimony? Um, things that stood out to me. Let's see. Things that stood out to me. All right. So he upgraded his phone. The day after, there was a decision about people who were with John O'Keefe that night. Um, that might have to give their phones up because um, they might have information, blah, blah, blah. 
I mean, I don't know what the jury's going to think about that because it's like, yeah, it's weird that it happened, but it happened the day before. I don't know, unless the defense is saying that maybe someone gave him a heads up to get rid of the phone. Um, possible. But it was weird to me that when they had that conference call with everyone and Mr. Lolly, Mr. Lolly was like, hey, you know, we got this uh, motion from the defense saying that they're going to, you know, they want people to, they want to get a hold of your guys' phone. Um, it is weird to me that he wouldn't mention at that conference call, like, oh, shit, by the way, I, I got rid of my phone last week. Um, maybe he didn't want to mention it because he thought maybe it seemed too suspicious. Maybe he genuinely just wasn't thinking for God. I... <sighs> I don't know. I mean, we do have to remember he does have law enforcement background, sergeant, detective. So I don't know. Um, in terms of that, he talked about how he usually sleeps with a phone in the bed. Like, OK, some people do, but I feel like most people do it like accidentally or when they're like really tired. I feel like for the most part, if you have a side table, you would just put your phone there. You would want to charge it. Um, we don't know how much battery life he had left, but we do know that he was in New York. He traveled four hours from New York and then went straight to the bars afterwards. So when would he have time to charge his phone? Unless he might have had a phone charger in the car and maybe charge all the way through. And then that way it had enough juice for the like the last for the next like, I don't know, five hours of the night. Um, let's see the missed call thing. Yeah, I don't know. I want to see what the cell phone data records looks like. Uh, cause it seems like, you know, he said he actually called Brian Higgins him and his wife were doing some stuff in the bed. And then Brian Higgins called back afterwards. But I think the defense is trying to assert that, well, it was not a missed call. Like what you're saying, it seems like you guys had a call for 22 seconds. So I don't know what that looks like. Um, and then a bunch of phone calls going back and forth, which, you know, it could seem like it might be a bunch of people getting their story straight, or it could just look like you're trying to talk to a bunch of people and try to process what happened because, you know, it's like, it's a pretty fuck scenario. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I, I want to see like tangible evidence. I want to see the receipts, but I don't know. We're, we're just seeing like surveillance footage from the bar, him play fighting. And I just don't really, I don't know. I don't really care for those. <gasps> David, no, I just got here. Hi, David. How are you doing today? Um, how's it going? Well, you can catch up. <laughs> you can go back to the live stream and all that stuff. Doing stuff in bed with Chloe in the room. Yeah. Some people have sex with their dogs there. Um, but yeah. Anyway, so um, I'm going to do what someone suggested. I'm going to take the break and I'm going to go eat my lunch. I'm hungry. So we're going to end the stream right here. And then we'll pick up again with a cross-examination of Brian Albert. He's the homeowner of 34 Fairview, where John O'Keefe's body was found um, at the very tip of his property line. And I, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't think cross-examination is going to last um, for the rest of the day. I'm sure we'll probably do like a little bit more. And then maybe we'll get into, oh no, we'll probably do redirect. So I don't know if Brian Albert is going to be on the stand for the rest of the day. Maybe do like some redirect and then get another witness in towards the end of the day. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, I also want to know what the fault call records look like, right? But I mean, here's the point of redirect. When Lolly goes up there, does to redirect, he's supposed to clear up a lot of things that we might have, you know, bubbling in our minds because the jury might have that in their minds as well. So hopefully Lolly will go up there and clear up some things. But does Lolly usually do a good job with redirect and clearing things up? Um, in my opinion, not really. <laughs> Sometimes he does, but I feel like he's not a hard hitter like some of the prosecutors that we've seen in previous cases um, with Miss Morrissey, right? With the Hannah Reed trial, with Georgia Kappelman, with the Adelson trial. And then what was another trial we watched where like I was like, oh, that's a good that's a good prosecuting attorney. Those are two that pop in my head so far. <laughs> You're doing Maru Chan. <laughs> I'm going to eat spaghetti, I think. Yeah, I'm going to eat spaghetti. Did I ever sign up for the Marvel Rivals? No, I did not. Is it out already? No, uh, no, I'll just, I'll just play Overwatch. Nah, I'm good. All right, y'all. So I'm going to end my stream. We'll be back in, I don't know. What, what, when is the court going to start back up again? Maybe 10.30, 1.30? 10.30 my time, 1.30 Eastern time. And that's like in 45 minutes, all right? I'll see you guys soon. Have a good one. Bye.